Record. All right, we're recording. Oh, what you fall? It's... All right, so to give a quick rehash to Ray, who wasn't here yesterday. You mean last session? Well, it's yesterday yeah. to me. No days matter in between. <laughs> to give a quick rehash to Ray, who wasn't here yesterday. You mean last session? Well, it's yesterday yeah. to me. No days matter in between. <laughs> I don't do anything else important besides this. This is my entire life. So, the entire party gathered together as they were in transit from the town of Brathis. They traveled westward to a specific smuggler's den that they had heard about. They also had a bounty on it that was offering a pretty decent amount. Uh, sadly, from what Sydney heard, that the town itself doesn't actually have enough money to pay it in total. Anywho, they met up with a uh, hunter on the outskirts of town named Drunt, who actually has been stalking the place and casing the joint in order to get an idea of how many people they were and yada yada. The entire party actually delved into this dungeon and... Succeeded magically without dying. I right know. Go ahead and bring you back to your smuggler's den so we can kind of pick up where we left off. What the heck? Come on. Back to notes. The party had cleared out most of the bandits of the smuggler's den with only the captain and a handful of survivors managing to escape around the uh, crusading adventurers. Uh, as they found the actual captain's quarters themselves, they found out that there was a female drow leading two drow warriors that was facing off against the captain after a heated debate and argument. Though nobody actually heard what the argument was about, they did actually come in just in time to actually see the two forces clash against each other. When the party intervened, uh, Abyssalus, who was actually wearing one of the um, smuggler's red sashes, kind of hopped on the same side as the red tongue smugglers fighting against the drow. When they realized that they were no longer at a grand advantage, the drow lady, an arcanist, and her two drow warriors disappeared after she used a special staff that warped all of them away in the flash of an eye, or the blink of an eye. The uh, paladin Ray also managed to have a lucky moment where one of the champions of Noxena, who had passed by earlier, had marked them to keep eyes on them. In the moment of almost sheer desperation and near death, the champion made their appearance, assisting the party and helping by killing as many of the red tongue smugglers that were in the way so that they could still achieve their goal. Uh, the moment that the dungeon was clear, the champion simply stepped in backwards into some shadows, simply vanishing from sight. Um, Ray, unfortunately, in the middle of the night, before the assault had been captured by the Red Tongue smugglers, as they had gotten out to get on watch, they were on last watch, I believe, and during their last watch, they roamed a little bit too close to the actual smuggler's den and was captured. 
the party managed to actually find Ray along with the nobleman Quentin who was kidnapped as well as Lady Shrew who was also kidnapped during an ambush on the side of the road. At current, the party has gathered relatively. Ray, Abyssalus, and Sydney still gathered in the main room with the nobles. Back, set control. Am I losing my mind? Why isn't this thing working? It was Why isn't what working? Well, I normally have the ability to like move everyone's map to a specific point and it's not working for my I already got my character down so I'll just that being said Ray, Sydney, and Abyssalus your group is actually in the main uh, square of this underground dungeon essentially uh, Lady Anya Shrew is sitting next to her two handmaidens who are still trying to dote on her as she in her elder, I guess, frail, her elder frail appearing self is hushing them away and keeps batting their hands off of her. Nobleman Quentin is actually sitting next to the door, his back up pressed up against it, kind of still breathing a little ragged. He still looks pretty beaten and bloody, almost as if they were just recently torturing him. In the uh, bottom left corner, over here, you have Aurora, Abigail, and Hunter Drent, who, after finding the actual smuggler's little hideaway, they discovered the stolen goods as well as other items that were brought in for smuggling and a few other pieces. As everyone has gathered together, um, for those of you who haven't seen it already. There is a letter that was on one of the red uh, red tongue lieutenants that was discovered after everybody started patting them down as well as some loot from the dead and the uh, actual contents of the treasure room after Hunter Drent took his cut. If you check your uh, player info there should be those three in there that you can all see. Mm -hmm. So, we'll go ahead and pick up with Ray. Actually, since Sydney's not here, we're going to pick up with uh, Aurora, Abigail, and Hunter Drent in the actual back room as Hunter Drent I'm is... Here. I'm here. Okay. As Hunter Drent has already carried most of his claimed belongings back up, he's already stacked most of them on Molly, and he's just been going back and forth through the dungeon. He's coming for his last little bit, and he steps over near these three trunks that have these golden bars inside that are all stamped with the sigil of Ravenholm. And he kind of keeps eyeballing them, almost as if he wants them, but Abigail, you can easily tell that there's something about this that he just there's no way that somebody that worships worships the same god as you would not be jumping at this without proper reason mm. and we'll pick up the story from right there I'm gonna just be looting around seeing what loose change I can stuff in my pockets before the par rest of the party gets here in this specific room, there's not much since Aurora chased you in here. You're still within eyesight of her. Um, let's see. There's still a bunch of items in here. As well as a uh, few weapons. These two long swords that look very finely crafted, these two great swords that have these very fine edges, this single battle axe that has these very sharp, nearly serrated edges that kind of like, it looks like it's wavy on the edges with these sharp little points at them that just, 
it almost looks like it would just tear into people. Mm. As well as a single flail. A chain flail that has these four uh, dangling little uh, metal balls at the end that all have these spines on them. Looks pretty aggressive. There's no books here. That's what that's what she says, uh to There is fine clothes, however, as I look at them. Did you want clothes? Because Go ahead. I'm not gonna touch them. I have I'm gonna check up on that wounded guy. Alright, so cutting back to Sydney, um, Ray, and Abyssalus. Abyssalus, ever since the final fight, has kind of been almost skulking in the corner. They keep offering these near silent prayers to Noxena. Something about the battle last night has just had them rattled ever since. They've been pretty quiet ever since then as well. As Ray, you go over to check on the nobleman Quinton. Yes. You walk over to him, he's... As you walk over to the nobleman, he seems relatively... All right, he's not, he's worse for wear, but he's a pretty hefty man. He's not super tall, as you notice. You walk up to him, and he's only about 5'4". Very short, very stout, has a fat belly. Looks like his stomach absorbed a lot of the blows. He's still kind of heaving a little bit, but he's not really suffering. And he has a little bit trickle of blood down the side of his cheek, and some coming from his uh, bright brow. But as you approach, he kind of like perkins up, he pulls his uh, pantaloons up and kind of tightens his belt as you approach, kind of straightening his back up and standing upright. I'm quite alright, I'm just... <clears throat> when you're a lord of a town, you just have to assume that everyone wants to hit you in the stomach. So you can walk? Of course. I've had some time to rest, as your party has been scrounging all of the bodies nearby. Oh, it's good to hear. Miss Anya Shrew, are you doing all right, my lady? As he turns over to the elder woman, who looks absolutely unfazed. She doesn't even have a bruise on her, there's no blood or anything, she's standing completely upright. She looks old, roughly in her, like, 70s to almost 80s. Her, you know, grayed out hair kind of dangling down a little bit, uh, breaking from her actual bonnet that's holding most of her hair in the back. She kind of, like, scowls at him. Like, I'm fine. You don't need to worry about me. You're the one that took the beating. They didn't dare touch me. The only one that tried, I kicked him. Kicked him so hard, he left the cell. I'm going to start heading to the treasure room. Alrighty. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. I'm now outside of the, the uh, border. <laughs> oh. For a moment, Ray runs so fast down the hallway, he just slams into the wall and just goes like, you know, cartoon style. No clips, just through the wall. It's just like this ray-shaped uh, 
hole in the wall, just cartoon style. And then they just pop back I, in. Uh, <laughs> clear my throat as uh, Aurora is standing in front of me, blocking my way into the uh, room. It's as you walk in that you see Aurora is standing at the door and just has her eyes almost glued to both Abigail and Drent, like calculating the amount of money that they, or of items that they're taking and their worth, as well as making sure that they're not doing a little bit too much. Um, Abigail, as you said earlier, you're going to try and pocket some of this extra money that was in here? Uh, yeah. I need Just you to a roll a sleight of hand check. Alright, let's see. Eighteen, not bad. You managed to pocket... Let's see. How much was totally in there? For the treasure room. You managed to pocket an extra gold piece or two. We'll say two gold pieces and like five copper. Okay. Did you mean to click scale mail? Uh, uh, the moment that you do, don't think so. Aurora comes around and kind of like, you glance back and she's staring right at you as you almost unsubtly just kind of like palm the money and mm -hmm. then try and grab it with the other side and her eyes are just on you. You don't know whether or not she actually saw that you took this. But you're a little suspicious. Could I check the chest for, uh... These gold? three chests that are down here, all three of them are just filled with these golden bars with a stamp from the raven home. It's this sigil of, like, a raven with its wings spread out, its tail feathers straight down, and its head to the side. With, basically with a shield in the background with these elegant, uh... Like, um, what are they called? Olive branches, kind of decorating the sides of this uh, shield around the raven. How much does one weigh? They're about, uh, about five pounds for each bar. Each one of these cases has about, uh, 50 pounds of gold in it. Dang. Um, as you like, you can take a moment and try and uh, guesstimate the worth of the amount of gold bars in these. I'll do that. Uh, go ahead and roll. Uh, what would that be? Investigation, yeah. It's intelligence based. Yeah, you can recognize this is gold bars there from the amount in each chest roughly the 50 pounds worth and probably about 20,000 gold pieces worth in each chest and, and there are chest. four chests scattered across this uh, room one that Abigail is sitting at the one that you're standing at and Drent is just kinda like staring at one of the open ones on the side so 80,000. Yes. I'm going to take two of the bars. All right, go ahead and mark down that you have two Ravenholm stamped gold bars. After a moment, uh, Drent kind of starts walking back to the front door, 
he seems to have taken a little bit less than what was initially promised, and he kind of just takes up the last uh, package of food and other valuable stuff that he's already taken and throws over his shoulder. He kind of gives this, like... Actually, yeah, you wouldn't be able to see it because you have your back turned to him. Uh, Aurora, roll me a quick perception check, please. Well, shit. It's not that hard as he starts walking towards you. You keep seeing as uh, Ray walks over and, like, grabs two of these, uh, well, basically one pound bars of gold. I don't know, I think it's, what, five pounds a piece? It's five pounds for each. And grabs these, like, five pound gold bars and puts them in his pack, and you see Hunter Drent give this look of, like, oh shit. And he just starts walking back towards the front door. From what you can tell, and the time that you've been in here watching him, he took a little bit less, well, not a little bit, he actually took roughly 30% uh, of the treasure as opposed to the 50% that he was promised, and he's starting to walk to the door. I'm gonna, can I notice this? You have your back turned to him, you can't see shit. There's golden, gilded, goldy goodness right in front of you. Like a kid in a chocolate factory, your eyes are just locked on it as you grab these heavy bars and begin putting them in your pack. I never did say I was putting them in my pack. Uh, I was just looking at them, but uh... Yeah, you did say you were I'm taking gonna... two. Yeah, taking two. I to step aside. But um, after that, I'm just gonna... finish up and... I guess, stand in the middle of the room. Can I look at the fine clothes? Yes. There's a few crates. They still have uh, some fine clothes left over from when uh, Drent was actually walking through them. There's about six sets in total. It uh, looks like Two are meant for, like, masculine types. They, It's a very wide-chested uh, shirt with these long, relatively, like, wide-cut uh, sleeves. They're very frilled. They have, like, uh, the blousing and everything. They have, like, frillies all over the place. It's very, like, a mixture of silk and cotton in a very fine weave. So it's, like... Comfortable and warm, but also has this appearance of much more wealthy than it should be. They also come with, like, pants and uh, very nice socks, actually. The other four are actually these dresses. They're mostly made of silks and other, uh, just, you can tell it's very fine cloth, finely weaved. You know. 10,000 billion Egyptian thread count kind of fine. I see. I don't know how to describe clothes, so yeah, that's what you get. They look nice. They look expensive. I leave the room. I need to edit your token. Give me a second. Uh oh. That health bar doesn't uh, seem good. No, everybody has their health bar up on your token. Everyone can see their own health bar. It's oh, just I so see. that uh, if you ever get into combat, you can just click on the uh, red circle and subtract your health from that, and it'll automatically deduct and show you your health bar of where you're at. And it also helps me because then I can see it. That way I don't end up accidentally having a dragon breathe on you for 150 damage. It'll only deal 30. 
kidding. Um, the other four dresses, there's a like purple dress. It's kind of like a like over the shoulder, uh, classy ballroom dress. Um, the other two just simply look like they would be worn to like uh, like an everyday walking dress that you'd see a normal uh, upper class person in the major cities just walking around in. It's kind of loose and form it's form fitting but loose around the legs, meant for like walking and moving around. Uh, the fourth dress is actually kind of elegant. It has a lot of frills down on the actual lower parts, but the upper part is almost built like a corset. And it actually has this shawl that's kind of like wrapped around the waist that could be brought up around the shoulders. I might as well grab the six clothing since that's basically the only thing I can carry and I want to look at the potions. Okay, you notice that there's over near Abigail in these wooden crates there's weapons laying around and you do notice that in one area there's this little uh, this small box roughly about a foot and a half in uh, length by about a foot in width and pretty decently stacked up on top of itself. You open it up and inside there's these four potions that are set like upside down next to each other, like crisscrossing. And as you look inside, there's this uh, red liquid. It kind of looks uh, not like blood. It's not thick or anything. It's almost kind of like... Uh, it has like the same thickness and consistency as like milk. But it's this red liquid, semi-transparent. If you want to roll me a Arcana check or a Medicine check or a Nature check, either one of those three would probably work. You kind of take a moment and thinking back to your training as stuff from your uh, parents back in the Lothian Empire and what they raised you to remember and realize something that your mother used to make just kind of like uh, she used to make potions just like this uh, your father would bring specific pieces and ingredients from his uh, workplace essentially and he would bring them to her she would grind them up mix them up mix them with like water and other ingredients and it create these special red potions that when drank they would regenerate somebody's body not to the point of replacing missing limbs but simple wounds would easily be fixed as it would actually cause the wound to close up if you drank a little bit and pour the rest on an actual wound these are known as health potions I grab them for now, which later on I will share with the members of the team. to the treasure room so you know what the health potions are capable of. These the health potions don't look nearly as impressive as the ones that your mother used to make, but they don't get the job done regardless. They probably taste like fish guts. They're bootleg health potions, aren't they? No. I look at Abigail and say, well, I'm sure the rest of the party can carry the rest. Mm. I guess, 
But I mean, you know, since we're here, we might as well look and see if there's anything else we personally might like before they start digging into it. You know, as you all look around, you do see that there's, you know, these dried fruits, um, stuff that you would normally use as, like, trail rations or military rations, uh, dried stable foods. It takes a while for them to rot. There's three barrels of pickled vegetables that are sitting in the corner. It's mostly, like, pickles and squash, some zucchini. They've all been pickled in vinegar. Good for, you know, keeping scurvy away when you're on ships and whatnot. Uh, there's these giant crates full of, like, mining picks, uh, shovels, and uh, they're all kind of, like, stacked in the corner. You do notice that there's these kegs. They're roughly... It's about a foot in diameter for the actual barrel. But one just has this... Uh, it has this symbol of like these this locked mouth, these sharpened fangs, kind of like almost connecting. And around the top and bottom, it just says Lockjaw Ale. And then there's another one that has in like this fine cursive print that's been like seared into the actual uh, keg itself is Bitter Bite Brew. These two kegs are just sitting in the corner. It's actually kind of stacked closer to where you found the clothes, not where you found any of this other stuff, just sitting around. Can we carry them? Oh, yeah. They're not, like, giant or heavy. It's not like, uh... It's not like the, like, fantasy giant keg things that you'd have at, like... Oktoberfest, where it's meant for like a hundred people. This is obviously something that like somebody would carry around on their person and you know pour a drink out of for themselves. All right, so Sydney's gonna start making her way towards treasure room. A few moments as the two of you are having this like small conversation, you hear footsteps and like the kind of ringing from like little bells and other pieces that are on the, as you know her as Sydney, the bard's <coughs> outfit, kind of jingling as she walks down the hallway coming into the room. I got a big, big foot in that chest. I look at the gold pieces and say I got an idea as I grab 10 gold pieces with a smile on her face. Uh... Okay. Should I be worried? We should all be worried. Cutting away for a brief moment, Ray. You actually hear as uh, the hunter Drent is starting to head out. He stops and looks at the uh, nobleman Quinton. I have an encampment nearby if uh, you want to leave this place and take a break. It's on the way back to uh, uh, Brathus. You can stop and take a rest there on your way back. That's where I'll be parting ways with the rest of these adventurers. It will also give you a good idea of where to send my payment. And he kind of gives like a slight bow to Quentin who gives him a nod and you see Drent moving on. Can I follow him? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna follow. I'll keep my distance, but I'm following. You follow him as he makes his way back through the actual... Ooh, wrong button. Makes his way back through 
<laughs> he heads all the way back towards the entrance where uh, most of the party had already come through. There's a few bodies here. See, he finally leaves. I carefully tread over them. You see that most of the bodies have already been like pulled off to the sides and set up against the walls. Kind of like have their arms like cross their main body. Ah. You see as Hunter Trent actually, he steps out carrying the last of this little, uh, the last of the supplies that he's grabbing from uh, downstairs. And outside he has this mule that's just, it's not heavily stacked, but there's the uh, saddlebags that are getting kind of full. He puts this last like pack on and straps it down with some rope. You notice that uh, there's a rather large wolf that's been sitting there, kind of like staring off, guarding this uh, donkey that Drent's been using. He sets the last of his stuff on there and he just kind of like pats his donkey, gives it some food, throws a little uh, meat snack towards uh, his wolf and the wolf just snatches it up. He seems to just be waiting out there for the rest of you to join him. He's not like trying to hide, he's not moving anywhere, he's not running or being aggressive or anything. Um, can I go for those two things of ale? The bitter and the other one? Yeah. Okay. And you grab these two kegs of ale and you kind of like take a little bit of rope from your pack, you strap them together and like strap them to the back of your backpack. And Aurora and Abigail, you both see as Sydney has these two kegs with, like, the nozzles right next to her head. And it just looks like she has these two shoulder, I guess, like, cannons made out of ale. Ha! <laughs> and it's really funny considering the small frame of Sydney and then these two, like, larger than her head casks that are just sitting on the side of her shoulders. And you can kind of see, like, she's kind of hunched over a little bit as, like, the weight is not what she expected. And it's not too much to where she's uh, struggling. So, out of character, real quick, what has been taken so far now? Uh, Ray took two of the gold bars out. So, two, mm -hmm. five of, two of the five gold, five-pound gold bars, which... Let's see, that's about 2,000 out of one of the uh, crates. Um, well, you said there was 10 in each one because there was 50 pounds of gold each crate. In each yeah, I'm not going to try and do the math on that. <laughs> I already calculated it. It's uh, 4,000 because each one's 2,000. All right, yeah, that's... I already did the math, but... I didn't do the math right now. <laughs> the math I did was calculated, but man, am I bad at math. My previous math was calculated, and all the shit that I wrote on this was calculated. But my brain is just not functioning on that higher level just yet. Uh, Sid uh, yeah, Sydney, as you walk around, there's uh, a bag of gold. It's uneven, not a really great amount in there. Uh, there's obviously, uh, three chests with these golden bars in it. One of them, you can actually see it's not full anymore. There's two of them missing. Uh, -huh. uh there's a, uh, flail, which is like a, a wooden stick with these chains hanging out the end that have these, like, little barbed balls at the end, and it's meant for you to, like, swing it around and whack people with. Mm -hmm. uh, serrated battle axe, these two finely sharpened great swords, two finely sharpened long swords. Uh, there's five crates of digging tools, three barrels of pickled vegetables, four barrels of dried food, and that's it. Uh, can I actually? Can I do a history check on that on these chests from Ravenhold or from Ra the symbol of the Raven? Uh, go ahead and roll an investigation for me. Wouldn't be history okay. as much. To investigation. Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. I got the roll now. Uh, 
Investigation. Ha ha! Seventeen for investigation. You step over to the gold bars and you kind of pick one up, you check the symbol. You know that these are actually uh, given from the capital. In the capital of Ravenholm, they will occasionally send out these chests of gold bars to the local lords and ladies in order to kind of mitigate issues. That way certain uh, lords, uh, dukes, and uh, barons can still afford to make sure that they have plenty of food for not only themselves, but also the people and the populace. It looks like these chests were intercepted, as you can kind of see that they've been dinged up and damaged. These are official crates that are still used from Ravenholm. You also, with your investigation, you notice that there's a bunch of scratch marks. It looks like people were trying to break into these for a while and finally got them open. Is you can actually look along the actual locks that these relatively intricate locks have been just worked on for quite some time there's a bunch of uh, like little scratch marks on the sides it looks like tools kept snapping and had to be broken out okay there's no missives there's no paper trail that's actually has these that you know of okay at current it's just these four crates sitting here okay um I'm going to wait before I make my next move to see what everybody else does, and then once everyone's done, I will make my move. You watch as <laughs> Aurora grabs ten of these bars and puts them all into her, her uh, backpack, and immediately you can actually see, like, she goes from standing very elegantly in her normal stance that when she put the pack on, she immediately has to, like, pregnant woman waddle, because it's actually pretty heavy. This is fucking heavy. Excuse me. Anyone else gonna do anything? I'm just gonna wait by the entrance. <clears throat> oh, uh, after taking what, uh, after taking what I could, I guess uh, that'll be it. I mean, I'm gonna go meet up with the rest of the party, I think. Okay. As you all kind of like gather up the last of the supplies and whatnot, um, you start heading back to the surface. Uh, Ray, no, a few moments later, you actually see a very quiet uh, Absalus. Kind of like walking their head a little bit down. Their shoulders are I'm kind of a little of worried for him. So slouched, he just silently. He looks up at you, and you meet eyes for a moment. He kind of gives you a nod, but he just seems to be in zoned out. Okay, like almost as if contemplating deeply in thought. I give him a nod. As the rest of the party begins to march their way out, the handmaidens following uh, the lady and nobleman Quinton as they head back to the surface. Uh, the rest of you, you all spend some time gathering up all these supplies and kind of bringing them close to the surface. You see as uh, you all kind of get back up there. There's a uh, makeshift wagon that Drent has kind of like put together. It looks like he's taken like um. It's not like it's not so much a wagon as much as like just a dragging cart kind of thing. He just built like this makeshift uh, sled, and he's just tied it to the back of the donkey. 
And you kind of like pile some of this stuff up on there, that way you don't have to carry it yourselves. And everyone, you find your way back to the surface. Um, not really going to be using this map anymore, but I'm just going to leave it on here because I did a lot of work on this. So you all find your way back to the surface. Uh, Drent kind of helps you stack up the remaining supplies onto the back of the little makeshift sled. You all go back to the surface. You, it's almost early morning again. Like the night sky is still pretty cool, which is a welcomed relief since you guys have been hauling stuff and it's kind of warm. As you get to the surface, you get that cool breeze from the late night into the early morning. And the sun starts to peek up over the side, and you realize that it's been a long day, especially since you guys took a a long rest inside one of the chambers last night. <clears throat> the uh, noble people kind of like file in with you. For a moment, you actually kind of see them like trying to climb onto this little makeshift sled. And Drent kind of like perks a brow at him as they kind of grumble and start walking next to it as Molly the donkey is almost struggling to move. But you see as Drent is kind of like lifting up one of the sides and dragging. And occasionally you'll see uh, Red Fang, the wolf, kind of like grab the other side and like pulling on it. They're kind of helping drag this thing back. It's, uh, it's roughly about... 30 minutes to an hour, you find yourselves back at uh, Hunter Drent's camp. Can I camp. try to help them? Of course, yeah. Real quick, did we bring back any proof that we killed these guys? You brought back the Lord? No. Nah. <coughs> nah. Also, hey. the other adventurers that were down here... They seem to have left before you guys managed to uh, even grab the Lord in the first place. It doesn't look like they stuck around at all. So you find your way back to Hunter Drent's little campsite. Oh, okay. Never mind. Shit. All right. Uh, was there something that you wanted to do? Yeah, I was waiting until everyone was done to figure out what we were doing, and then I was going to grab uh, the Hang on, I gotta swing to a different call real quick. You guys, go, you guys go ahead. I'll be back momentarily. Um, <clears throat> I was going to ask how much, how much can Sydney actually carry when it comes to those gold pieces? They weigh five pounds, you said. You can carry a maximum of ten. It's a flat rate of ten across the board for everyone. Ten pounds? No, ten bars. It's fifty okay. pounds. Okay. Well, she was going to carry ten. That's. What I was waiting for everyone done to see if they were going to take any more. Yeah, uh, don't use Discord to whisper me. Just type slash W and then type in uh, Dungeon Master. And it'll automatically whisper me in game. Okay. Normally, if you just type like Dungeon, it'll come down with a drop down menu. You can click on it. You can send me messages in here. Gotcha. Which helps me a lot because then I don't have to constantly be tapping back to Discord to double check. So, yeah, as you all, Jack Money. Uh, we'll go ahead and say that while you were down there and grabbing stuff, you also see as Aurora stacks her pack up, you grab ten bars out of the one of the other pieces, one of the other crates. Mm -hmm. Now, these crates were dragged along with you, but they're just lighter than they were before. Gotcha. As you uh, all finally find your way back to the encampment where you first met, uh, Drent, who was kind of scouting it nearby, immediately you see uh, Red Fang like take off, find their little comfortable spot, which between all the rocks, it looks like they've dug out this little uh, area where it's just soft uh, dirt underneath, no rocks or pebbles or anything, and Red Fang immediately goes over, spins around in that spot, and just like collapses on their side for a bit. Uh, Drent unhooks Molly, takes all the saddlebags off, and uh, leads her over to this water trough that he has set up in the corner. There's like a little uh, 
another trough nearby and he kind of like grabs some of the uh, sacks on the side of his camp and he pours out some oats and Molly starts drinking and eating a little bit and resting. Then he finally goes and like sits down on his little uh, make to makeshift bench and rests for a little bit after uh, kind of starting up a little fire for himself. He kind of gives you all a nod to kind of like, yeah, you can take a small break here, but I don't want you staying. You actually see as the nobles all gather together, uh, Lord Quentin and uh, Lady Shrew are talking to each other. Not like loudly, but not hushed whispers or anything. They're just inconsequential, just, well, I've never had to deal with such ingrateful smugglers and Oh, those bandits got what they deserved. I'd say execute the whole of them. And they just back and forth with meaningless banter. As the rest of you kind of come in, you see the Bistlers kind of like walk over, take a seat on the uh, edge of the bench, his back towards Drent, and he kind of like leans against the wall. Alright, I'm back. Welcome back. Yes. So you all, to catch you up real quick, yeah, everyone found their way back to uh, Hunter Drent's main camp. Okay. Uh, he's kind of just like stacked up here. He puts his stuff off into the corner. He's letting Molly rest. And, I'm just uh, going to sit down on the ground and just take my helmet off. Got to clean the uh, face plate. You see, as Ray takes her helmet off and begins kind of like taking a uh, cloth that they normally use to wipe things down, then start cleaning their helmet and face plate off. You see, as Sydney is dancing around in a square like a Wiccan. <laughs> Aurora's kind of staring off into space right next to Abigail, who. Just watching everybody else. Okay, so I grab each dress and personally give it to each member. Mm. To each of us, or... Ah. Yeah, so that would be... She picked up four dresses. There's four ladies here. We'll go ahead and say there's one ballroom dress, two walking dresses, and one regal dress. So everybody roll a 1d4. I look at Abigail and say you know you could use some better clothing and hand it over. Say roll a 1d4. So yeah, uh, unless you specifically want to give certain dresses to certain people. I'll just say take a 1d4 and see. I'm fine with what I have. I don't need any of that pretty shit. Rude. I'll take then it as a gift. You greedy but... bitch. <laughs> Both Ray and Sydney, you end up with these. Uh, it's fine clothes, but it's meant just for like your everyday walking. Aurora, you end up giving Abigail a ballroom dress. It's very fancy. And you end up taking the uh, regal-looking fine clothes. As you guys are passing this stuff out, you actually see as, like, Anya Shrew and her handmaidens are, like, kind of looking at you out of the corner of their eye a little bit, like, what the fuck? <laughs> okay. Okay, so I will quietly walk towards Drend and give him one set. He kind of like puts his hand up and he like reaches over and he opens his satchel and he's like there's two of the uh, casual walking or the fine clothes for uh, walking dresses in there as well as two of the uh, like guys regal clothes. He's like kind of just shows them to you for a second and then closes a little satchel that he put him in. He does give you a nod and a wink though. 
he's already taken his uh, portion that he desired. The rest of the stuff he didn't want to touch. Okay, then more for me. All right, do you guys want to take a short rest here? I think all of you automatically healed yourselves. We weren't supposed to. How many Doesn't sets matter. do I have actually? I oh, you're at full HP right now. Um, Aurora, you currently Just have right. three sets. You have uh, two male and one female. Nice. And as far as uh, like spell slots and everything, you guys actually haven't taken a long rest since the last fight. And I'll just say that you guys took a short rest as you're uh, marching around, and just say for the sake of it that yeah, you you recovered HP, but you didn't recover your like spell slots or anything. You guys have been awake pretty much all night. Anywho, uh, Hunter Trent kind of like you can kind of see he's a, a little bit leery for a moment, but he puts his hand on uh, as he actually like walks over and taps Aurora on the back of her shoulder. Kind of like looks at him and he's like. You still have a ways to go, and there's still plenty of distance between the town of Brathis and where we are right now. Uh, I can lend you Molly, but once you get to town, you need to lead her back outside and just let her go. She'll find her way back to my camp. She always does. But you can need somebody to pull that uh, hand cart or else... It's going to be all of you, and I might be greedy, but I'm not an asshole. Not to mention, those uh, crates of gold bars need to find their way back into the hands of the uh, noblemen, or the people might suffer. Even I'm not dumb enough to grab those. And he starts walking over to uh, Molly. And you start to see as, uh, he doesn't put any of the other saddlebags or anything back on her, but he does lead her back over to, like, this little sled. With, uh, all of your belongings that you pulled from the depths. And he hooks her back I up to it. I'll make sure to bring her back. You better, or I'll hunt you down and kill you. My bad, I did not mean to interrupt you, Josh. Gucci. So with that, the magnificent Molly now has a sled attached to him, but I don't have a sled, I just have carts. I mean, I don't feel like putting a cart on her right now. I look at everyone and say it's about time we leave. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Well, do we have everything that we can possibly take? You're thinking about stealing from his camp? No. If he's offering us Molly and we have the cart full of valuables or whatever we took from the keep, May I suggest we go back for more if we can? If not, well... I'm open to suggestions. It's up to the party. I'm not opposed to it. You can try, but I'm not going down there. That's a no from Aurora. Not a hard no. Just uh, she's gonna stay upstairs while you all go down. Yeah, I'll stay up here with the Lord. 
I mean, you guys aren't actually at the smuggler's den. You'd have to backtrack about an hour's worth of time to get back to the smuggler's den and double check. Uh, Roll an animal handling. (laughs) Rolls an app one. It just... (laughs) Me and my my mouth, I'm sorry. (laughs) You reach out to pet Molly and she kind of like bucks for a second. You not knowing that this is a sign that you're not supposed to touch the animal. Immediately try and aggressively put your hand and you kind of like slap them on the butt a little bit. And Molly just gives you a, uh, not a hard kick, but it's definitely one that you feel and it just like claps your ass cheeks a little bit. Yeah, it, you take a hoof to like almost the side of your stomach. Molly doesn't actually manage to land the blow because I don't have a character sheet for Molly. I just have their HP. And I don't feel like trying to roll for it. Yet. And she kind of like misses you just barely, but you immediately just see this like hefty, strong legged hoof fly right by your entire body. She kind of like makes a bunch of noise and kind of like sits uneasy. She keeps stepping side to side, kind of like. Like, she's trying to get away, but she's already hooked up to the sled, so she can't really, like, run sideways to get away from you. So she just kind of sits okay, there. you know what I'm not trying again as I go back. So we're all going to head back to the, um, smuggler's camp? Uh, I... I'm not. Yeah... It's a long trek, and I... I feel like I need a drink. So... (sighs) Fine. Hey, I'll split one of the gold bars with you. How do you split a gold bar? I was gonna ask the same question. Turn it in for money, and then you half the money. You know, you won't have money. to as I open my bag. You will see inside of a rover's bag. She has ten of these gold bars stacked in there. Oh my. Mm. So you're going to continue heading back towards town? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Let's go. (sighs) Ah, Move Molly over. What about the nobles? They're still following you. Okay, good. They kind of, like, stack up. You see as the two handmaidens are walking, like, one to the side and one to the back. And uh, nobleman Quentin is sitting on the other side. And that's kind of like their marching order. You can actually see that the nobleman Quentin is actually giving uh, Lady Shrew a lot of respect. She seems to be much more of a actual royal-ish type in comparison. She has a lot more of that regal presence as opposed to nobleman Quentin who seems a little bit uh, not just short and stout but kind of wimpish. So as you guys march along the road for a while, it's still about another two hours trek. For the most part, Molly's dragging this cart. You see as the nobles are kind of like walking just in front. Uh, occasionally, nobleman Quentin will kind of like reach back and kind of pet Molly, make sure that she's okay. He seems to have... A kinship to horses, and since Molly is almost a horse, 
he's still trying to treat her well enough, especially since she's borrowed. She kind of like marching down the path a little bit here. I'm staying ahead. Um, is there any other marching order that you guys are going to be in, or is this just going to be the way that you are? I made this map to kind of double check. Right here. Mm. Oh, hang on, where is it? I'll just be in the back. Yeah, I'll be right over here. <laughs> this list is kind of like hanging off to the side behind one of the handmaidens, just off to the back, kind of keeping his, uh, still keeping his shield up and keeping his eyes open. But he doesn't seem to be nearly as enthusiastic as usual. And still relatively quiet since, uh, the battle inside. I'm a little more worried now. I need a group perception check. These are some rough numbers. Those are some very bad numbers. You some you did better than me though. I don't roll for perception. Wow. Ah. Road's clear, guys. <laughs> Yay! Yay! No fighting. Good. <laughs> I don't want the fighter who doesn't want to fight. <laughs> we finna die. You guys keep marching forward for a die, while. Yeah. It's not late. It's still, you know, early morning. It's getting closer towards, like, uh, about a few hours from noon. The sun is, like, actually crested over the top. You guys keep marching forward. Eventually finding yourselves kind of next to this rocky embankment. And it's about this point that you notice that you're struggling to move ever so much every step is like sticking to the ground you're finding yourselves having to actually like almost rip your feet off the ground is uh you all kind of move around a little bit it's about this time that you're pretty easy to tell as you look down the ground is actually covered it would look like morning fog and dew kind of like opens up as the sun hits it and breaks it and it's just these glistening spider webs. You guys walked right into the middle of a huge batch of them. Hmm. Well, I see. need everyone to oh, roll initiative. Fantastic. Damn, Wait, I was about what? to say. God damn. All right. Boop, 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 doo, doo, doo. Shit. Ooh, that's not bad. Kind of helps if I actually put up the initiative order before asking for initiative. I am so smirt. A smirt you are, yes. Hmm. Alright, so. Aurora nailing it with the natural 20. Oh, yes, a 6. Um, Ray, when you roll initiative, click on your token and then hit on initiative. It automatically puts you in the turn order, so I don't have to manually do it each time. Six. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, Forget to change the name a little bit. Bam! Where are you at? Huh? There we go. Mm -mm. Boater memes? I don't like. So, bursting from these hatches in the ground, 
you see these lovely, lovely, lovely giant spiders. You see as one of them immediately goes after Sydney, this massive spider bursts from the ground and lunges at you with a bite attack and a surprise round that they were granted. The other spider is going to be taking a shot at Ray, and the third spider will be taking a shot at the poor handmaiden in purple. So we didn't take a long rest. Uh-oh. Spells. Yikes. So the first one going against Sydney will be an 8 to hit, which I'm sure doesn't. Yeah. You manage to just, like, jump out of the way at the last second as you hear, like, uh, sticking webs kind of breaking. You look over and you just see these glowing void of eyes that just look like black orbs kind of catch the light a little bit as it snaps out. And as it does, it just, mandibles just miss you. Fuck yeah! Suck a dick! It's a 7 to hit... Uh, Ray, who, the moment you see this one pop out at you, it's large in size, you just put your shield up and its jaws are just gnashing at the edge of your shield as you just buck it off. And the handmaiden. See if she's the lucky one. She is not the lucky Ooh. Do Yikes. I That's have a... her as a thing? I think I do. I do. <laughs> in purple, right? I just needed to... Yeah, her AC is just 10 because she's just wearing simple clothes. Rip. It's 10 piercing damage. Mm. You see as a trapdoor spider lunges and it smashes her teeth into this girl and immediately her body goes limp as it yanks her back underground. She what? is dead. And gone into the underground. Within a blink of an eye, she just disappears. So does that mean one of the spiders is gone too? Yeah. That was Speaking of which, these magical spiders go back into their little hidey holes. What? Well, not. The moment right. that they snap out and make a snatch, they immediately burrow back down. These are trapdoor spiders. Nice. Hey, completely unrelated, real quick, I need everyone's attention to pick one, two, three, or four. Just pick one, two, three, or four. Three. Four. Two. Josh? There's only one number. God damn it. Okay, sorry. Abyssalus picks one. Yeah, so, yeah. Abyssalus has one, Aurora has two, Abigail has three, Ray has four. Doesn't help me! <laughs> go, to, go, sorry, go back. Did you want them all to pick the same numbers? Fuck! Yeah. Here, look. No, we're done, we're done. It doesn't matter, it's over with. Three. The number is three. Your magic number is three. That brings us to Aurora on the top of the turn order. Uh, I think we messed up, guys. Robot. Beep boop 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 beep 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 boop boop. Beep boop. Fuck off. Wait, wait, no, no. Laura needs to say her her catchphrase. Oh no. Oh yes. Yes, yes. You need to say your catchphrase. Everyone, turn your 
Turn your headphones up or speakers up. I'll just say it. Go ahead, Aurora. Stay strapped or get clapped, little, little, little. <laughs> <laughs> what has my campaign become? Campaign out there. Uh, stay <laughs> All right, Aurora. While I appreciate you whispering, the moment that your turn comes up and the surprise round is over, you can feel free to throw your uh, fun fun times out there. As your turn comes up, you see as these doors on these spiders just shut. All three of the spiders vanishing underground. You're still heavy webbing on the ground. Okay, we need to be careful where we walk. So with pure anger, Aurora screams... I hate spiders and hold a reaction to use dragon's breath on whatever spider appears near me. Alright, you do know that dragon's breath is not a action spell, it's a bonus action that you cast on yourself. Oh yeah, shit. <clears throat> okay, I'll do that anyway. So you all see as Aurora casts, slapping her, uh... I don't know. If you want to explain how you cast this, I would like you to do it, because if you don't, I'm just going to make something stupid. How the fuck do I explain this? Didn't hear. I got it. <laughs> I got you. I got you, fam. You all kind of like, oh, no. in the, out of the corner of your eye, you see Aurora lick her palm and just slap herself in the ass. And as she does, you see Frost <laughs> begin to like... This cold air and Frost begins to bellow out of her mouth a little bit as she begins to hold her action for Frost Breath. Which is Dragon's Breath. Go ahead and mark off a level 2 spell slot. <laughs> oh, sh I should have never asked you to describe that. No. Mistakes were definitely made. <sighs> so, Aurora, you are holding your Dragon's Breath activation, which is one action. That brings us to Abigail. Well, gone and dead. Okay, good. Um, let's just move on. Is everybody in agreement? This yeah. uh, she's asking with a, with a free action. Is she gone. She dead. Not fucking with spiders, and I'd rather get back to the town alive. Yep, agreed. Let's get the fuck out of here. All right, and just for safe measure. Um, what? that might be weird to try and cast like that. Um, from where we're standing now, could I cast the sleep spell n at least, I want to say roughly 45 feet below me? You cannot cast spells through the ground. Mm, okay. All right. Well, um, I'm going to say, are we in rough terrain now, since it's like a sticky, mossy terrain? It is considered rough terrain. You have half movement. Um, hmm. Go ahead and... Actually, no. I'm not going to expose that yet. I'm going to move 15 feet because that's what I can and I'm going to prepare oh, 
hopefully I'm standing where the trapdoor was. I'm going to ready an inflict wound spell if the spiders decide to come out again. You summon up the magics. This gilded, like, golden arcana forms in your hand. It's kind of glowing, and you can kind of see there's these, like, golden spines that kind of, like, appear out of the palm of your hand. Kind of like gold, like melted gold that kind of, like, turns into these little thorns and spines as it kind of glows around your hand as you begin holding the spell in your palm. And you're going to hold that action. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Brings us to side knee. Uh, I ain't going to do anything. You're just going to pass your turn? Yeah. You will see a Sydney is just still staring up at the clouds, wondering what kind of food she's going to eat later. I'm gonna grab when I get to the bar. That being said, you see, as two of the three spiders pops back up, Aurora, you can use Dragon's Breath in a cone in front of you towards this spider or that spider. Abigail, you can go ahead and roll your inflict wounds as you're behind the spider and you try and grab towards it. Oh, come on. Why does it got to be a six to hit? Come on. As you reach out, like seeing the spider's legs kind of pop out as it like resurfaces, you reach out and you end up touching the back of the door that it has. It's just a sticky web door. And your spell, like, your hand sticks to it for a second, and you just see the spell kind of spike against the ground, and then dissipate. <sighs> I don't want to hurt anyone but the spiders, so I won't do it. You see as all the frost that was billowing out this, like, cold air that was once billowing out of Aurora's mouth, suddenly she just swallows it. You kind of see her, like clench a little bit to hold it in. Uh, Sydney. Mm -hmm. A natural 20 to hit. You guys, you do... Alright. You take 15 points of piercing damage and I need you to roll a constitution saving throw. 10-4. Is that just constitution? Um, there should be a little thing right next to your stats that says saving throws. Click on constitution there. Yeah, constitution. Yeah, saving throws. Yeah. You had to meet it to beat it. You manage to... You take this massive bite into your leg, like this spider just buries its fangs into your leg and immediately you can feel this pump of poison as you kind of like grit and somehow you manage to not let the poison affect you. It still hurts and you take an extra five points of damage as you succeeded, you only take half damage. So how much health am I? Away. You lose 20 in total. Sweet. You will see as Sydney takes this massive, like, this bleeding gouge into her leg, and she immediately just goes woozy. She's not a help, but she's definitely not feeling very well. The other spider is gonna. Does advise Ely's turn appear? What is what? Shit, sorry. She might enter on accident. The potato. It be my turn. Just the thing. Oh yeah, I forgot to roll for potato. Mabazan. I forget. I'm supposed to be playing multiple characters. Uh, let me go ahead and give Absolus their turn. Wait. Click, click. The initiative of zero. Oh no. <laughs> Well, their turn's not coming up for a little bit. 
um, the spider, after seeing that Ray is this heavily armored target, actually turns and aims at the nobleman Quentin. It is going to try and take a bite out of him. With a natural one, it does not manage to do anything. It, like, tries to reach out and scramble a little bit to try and get to him, and Nobleman Quentin just dives under Molly. And Molly, who starts bucking and kind of, like, lifts her hoofs up, scares the spider back as it retreats back. And at the end of the turn, poof, they both pop back underground. This starts Ray's turn. All right, let's get going. Let's get running. Wait, why didn't we run before? They pop back up. You could have run. You just I thought, yeah. I, I thought that's you what just we were doing. Skipped your turn. You skipped your turn instead of moving. On your turn, you can actually use your movement action and then your actual action to get double movement. Oh, I thought we were just. I thought we were like I was skipping my turn because I thought we were running to the camp, like getting the hell out of here. Okay, yeah. maybe I was under the wrong impression. Okay, well then, okay, go ahead, continue. Oh, I, I'm, I've moved. You'll see as Ray starts moving forward, trying to get out of, uh... Shot, I forgot to roll one more thing. Shit. Oh, okay. After the shock wears off, you kind of see the nobles kind of like shake their heads a little bit. Anya Shrew actually looks over as one of her handmaidens just disappears and she was just frozen in place. They will have a turn on the next grouping. Uh, it's 15. Good enough. And descending one more time. That brings us to... Absolus. Absolus positions themselves at the back of the uh, group, kind of protecting Molly, as well as the other two uh, remaining. Kind of like caught by surprise initially, now they actually have their like stance up, their eyes are open and everything. They're going to uh, make sure that the nobles try and get out. Which brings us back to Aurora's turn. Robot. So I will walk in front of Sydney and ready my action to frost breath the piece of shit spider. <laughs> you walk in front of Sydney. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Huh. You manage to kind of mosey out of the way as you start walking in front of Sydney, kind of like brushing your side, and you feel the moment that your foot steps down, the ground starts to cave in a little bit. And like you step, you feel yourself falling, but you manage to like duck back off to the side. There is a trap door that you almost stepped on. And it would have been very bad for you if you did fall in there. But yeah, you managed to save it. Lucky ducky. So you're holding your frost breath in front of Sid? Yes. Okay. Brings us to Abigail. <sighs> so now, do I know where that one trap door is that it's closest to me? I'm marking it. It's right since... there. Yeah. Hmm. What do and I have in door is there as well. What do I have in my repertoire to kill spiders? Mm. 
It would be awesome if you guys had a fire mage with you. Oh, it'd be wonderful, but, uh, best I got is... I'm going to ready an Eldritch Blast. Excuse me. Yes. Nothing. <laughs> you getting the fuck out of here? I yeah. mean, we should be, but everybody seems intent on fighting the spiders that can drag us down into Foreversville, so... I'm behind I'm a trap door. It, bruh. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try and move another 15 feet this way, and I still have sight on that, so I'm going to ready an Eldritch Blast for that. Alright. So, Aurora's holding Frost Breath, Abigail's holding Eldritch Blast, that brings us to Sydney. Sydney! You are bleeding from your leg. There is an immense pain going through your entire body. A giant spider nearly bit your fucking leg off. Ow, ow, ow. Oh my fucking god. Uh, well, since we didn't take a long rest, I can't heal myself. And... How far can I move again with the extra actions and shit? You have your movement action, which is halved. So it's your movement speed halved. Then you can use your action itself... To uh, move again, you won't be able to do anything else aside from the two movements. But you can move 15 feet and then another 15 feet on top, so you can actually get your 30 feet of movement speed. There's a trap door around there, though. Yeah, that one's dead, isn't it? Oh no, it's not. No, it 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 just took her down there. Could pop up at any time. And probably eaten. You can move through allies. So I can't go here. Um, so we know one. It's like well, you know what I could do, but I just realized that when when we leveled up, I don't know how I was supposed to add my new spells. Um, but I have the I have the well, I can go invisible. You have a second level spell slot. For invisibility. Oh my god. You've been on the phone with me for like four fucking days. <laughs> yeah, we, we talked about it the other day when I said I'll take those two. I just didn't know how to add them. Uh, give me a second. Ugh. It was like burning light or some shit. Blinding light or something like that. You're a bard. Dancing lights. Dancing light, thank yeah, you. Yeah, dancing lights. Yeah, it's a second level spell, invisibility. My god. And dancing lights is a cantrip. Yeah. I have to close all the other windows to put this in for you. Even if I wanted to move. You could technically move out of the range of these things. With. Because I can move right next to you. Right. Yeah, you can move right next to Ray. We'll go with that. I'll move this for in. So I need to bring up this list of sheet again. Isn't your movement half? Yeah, yeah but 15. if you use your movement action and your main action as a movement action, you can still move 30 ah, feet. Fair enough. So I went 30 feet. I'll move right next to you. Alright, so that brings us to the nobles and Molly. 
The nobles, realizing that they are not meant for this kind of thing, immediately try and take off running. You see the handmaiden who immediately gives no fucks. Fucking just sprints past on your shrew who actually doesn't have the ability to move that fast manages to get up to the back of Sydney before she looks exhausted the nobleman Quinton actually manages to get up beside Anya his robust size making him struggle as uh Yeah, you see Molly dragging a cart, managed to get just behind the group of them. Which brings up the people that are still back here. Aurora, go ahead and roll your Dragon's Breath damage. It would be my turn. Right. right. All right. Actually, it's it's not. Well, the trapdoor spiders have a fourteen for initiative, and you have a six. They're not on there. All right. Yeah. Fair they're enough. invisible because I use a GM token. Ah. Here, if you want to see them as visible. No, no, no. It's good. Uh, there. Well, at the start, I also need an Eldritch Blast from Abigail. Mm -hmm. Give me just a second. <laughs> Big ol' Scorpones, or Spidones. Honestly, I think Scorpions would be a little bit easier to deal with. Aurora, you remember how I told you how to roll the... Yeah, there you go. Does a 13 hit the fucking spider? No, they have an armor class of 14. Again, you fire off a blast, and it just kind of like bounces off the edge of their chitin, and the energy disperses over the top of their body, as you see it kind of like bunker down for a second. Today's not a day for spells. You see as the spider actually steps out of its den, getting closer to a nobleman Quentin. Uh, the other spider needs to make a dexterity saving throw, which will be... Six. They take 12 points of damage. Oh, uh, you know what I should have done is I should have wailed my fucking hammer on the fucking trapdoor entrance. Twelve is... Should have tossed the torch down there. Well, let's hope the spider doesn't kill Quentin. And be a problem. I can take the hit, so... Quentin. Actually, let's see. Yeah, it'll... The spider next to you, Aurora. Tries to take a bite out of you. With the 10 to hit, it just... You manage to beat it back with your staff as it's trying to, like, gnash at you. You just keep, like, putting your staff in the middle of its mouth and kind of poking its eye and it kind of, like, retreats back. The massive breath kind of causing its body to kind of, like, squeeze up so it's not hitting you nearly as hard as it normally would. Nobleman Quentin, let's hope you don't die. No. Oh, yeah, spider rolls a crit. The spider tries to take a bite out of Nobleman Quentin, but Molly just whacks it with its hoof. And it kind of like hisses for a second and kind of sits there. It's at this point that the other spider pops back in. Apparently finished wrapping up the other body, it pops out and moves a little bit closer and faces towards... Absolus. 
is going to try and use a web attack against Absolus. Ooh. With Ooh, 18 to hit, oh boy. You have to beat it to beat it. So you need to make a DC 12 strength check. Oh god. No. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! You all see as a spider like rears back, its butt pops forward, and this spraying of web just sprays all over Absalus as it uses its uh, upper two legs to start wrapping Abyssalus up in it. And you actually see as they just get tightened up closer and closer as they get wrapped up. They are now considered restrained, and they take three damage. Not a whole lot of damage, but they're restrained, which means they can no longer move. They can no longer take any actions. And all attacks against them will be made at advantage. And that brings us back to Ray's turn. I'm going to push Quentin out of the way. Like, behind me. Uh, and I'm going to try and attack the spider. Smack that fucking spider and murder it. I'm gonna try and uh, let me just look. A fifteen to hit. That does hit for seven points of damage. Sweet. You take your sword and you smack it towards it. You catch the spider kind of like towards the abdomen. Your sword kind of like digging in a little bit. You actually see this nasty green fluid begin pouring out of the wound. So the spider hits it and begins rearing back. It's two front, mat uh, two front legs kind of beating at you, trying to like swing towards you. And that's your turn? Uh, hold up a minute. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to use an action surge. And hit it again. Yeah, fucking do it again. Eight does not hit. The second time you pull your sword out and you swing it wide and the spider rears backwards and your sword just barely misses its stomach and its inner body as it like manages to scoot back just out of your range as you swing. That's your action and your bonus action and you still have 5 feet of gain of movement or 10 feet of movement left? 10. Uh, but I'm going to stay right there. Okay. Brings us to Absolus, who's going to attempt to break themselves free of the webbing. The saving throw of 14, they managed to actually break out of the webbing, but they could no longer do anything else as they had to wait till the end of their turn to free themselves. They are no longer considered restrained, but they have no actions at current. Brings us to Aurora. I do frost breath again at the spider. Frost breath again? You only have one charge of frost breath. When you cast it on yourself as a Do bonus I? action, it gives you one charge of Frost Breath, if I'm not mistaken. Or Dragon's Breath. Until the spell ends, the creature can use... Oh, until the spell ends, the creature can use it. And it's concentration for up to a minute. So yeah, you, you can keep using it. Go ahead and uh, 
use the little dice thing and hit that 3d6. Make another deck save for the trapdoor spider. Fails again, takes another 10 damage. Brings us to... Actually, yeah, that's your bonus action and your action, so... Unless you want to move somewhere, that should be your turn. Yeah. Yeet. Abigail, it's your yes. time. These three giant spiders are sailing your party, and they don't seem to want to give up. Uh, Kill them. Oh, fuck it, the Rudy. What are we gonna do? Um, you know what? As a cleric, I think I'm gonna try casting Guiding Bolt. If that doesn't work, I don't know what the fuck will. Uh, yeah, Guiding Bolt. Hey, Hang on, Ross. Yeah. Oh, fuck it. Yeah, it, that spell's not hitting anywhere. Wonderful. What is it, Rox? Um, I'm just letting you know that uh, I did get the, And, uh... Yeah. That's about it. You're out of spells now, right? No. Not yet. Not quite. Out of the good ones, yes. Out, out of, of the spells good ones? In... Out of the good ones, yes. Out of the spells in general, no. Yeah, you can use cantrips. I can still use cantrips, and I still have one first level spell. So, as Abigail, you cast this guiding bolt. You a nice damage, too. Aim at the creature, and you fire the bolt, and instead of it flying straight, like it has this weird corkscrew, like golden wave, kind of like an eagle made out of gold as it spins towards the target, and there's. The last minute, the spider manages to rear back to avoid a ray second strike. And as it does, your bolt just flies right by, hitting the ground without dealing any damage to it. Is there anything else you'd like to do on your turn? No, no just piss and grumble, really much. That's You kick the angry. dirt in frustration. Yeah. Sydney, you're still yeah. gravely wounded. Mm -hmm. You're standing off into the corner. You see one of the handmaidens sprint by you. Alright. Um... Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to try and give this a shot and do hold person on this spider. Closest to Ray. I think. Hang on, let me make sure. Um, yeah. And the closest one to Ray. Okay. Right in front of him. The uh, red dot right. spider has to make. Oh, that is my spine, Wisdom and that hurts. Saving throw. I marked it off my list. Yeah. They fail. They are considered paralyzed. You see as the spider rears back and the moment it drops its legs again and like hisses towards Ray. In the middle of its hiss you just hear it stop as these black and purple chains crawl all over its body and lock it in place. They have this somewhat like ominous glow about them. But the thing is just frozen like it's absolutely not moving. All attacks against it currently have advantage and any hit will automatically guarantee critical damage. Sweet. Is there anything else that you'd like to do on your turn? Like uh, I can move I can still move fifteen feet, right? Yep. Okay. Um, I'm going to shift direction. Um, and I'm going to go there. I'm going to shift right here. Cool. And that'll be my turn. That brings us to the nobles and Molly. Lady, she books it. She's outie. As you just see her fucking gone. She just poofed. 
you see as she kind of like gets to the edge she's no longer like struggling to move her legs and she just like takes off running on your shrew gets about another 15 feet away molly attempts to get away getting about 15 feet back behind uh yeah and the nobleman Quinton he runs right around Sydney getting to the other side luckily the spider can no longer fight back as it's frozen in place so none of them take attacks of opportunity lucky duckies which brings us back to the spider's turn The spider that's fighting Absalus is going to try and take another bite at him. With a 7 to hit, Absalus, no longer dealing with this shit, just blocks the actual hit with uh, their shield, knocking them back a little bit. The spider fighting Aurora is going to use its one web attack and try and catch her. The 16 to hit. It's meet it to beat it. So it actually does hit you. You take 3 points of damage and you need to make a strength saving throw. DC is 12. Oh no. Yikes. Oh, that's not the right one. There it is. Web it's gonna drag me back down to its lair. Aurora, as you're standing there, this wounded spider rears back and fires this webbing all over you and begins wrapping you up and you're almost completely cocooned. It's covering most of your body and you can no longer move. You're considered restrained. Sorry for the ambient noise my roommate is in the kitchen. Uh, the final spider is going to not do shit because it can't do shit. That brings us back to uh, Ray Ray. If I attack it, would I have advantage since it's held? Not only do you have advantage, but if you land a successful hit, it's automatically guaranteed to be critical damage. Well then. You know, there's a button that you can press that gives you advantage ah. on your sheet. Well, they're both 16. So... Well, 16 hits. So if the first one you dealt 10, 10 damage, 10 doubled is 20. You take your sword, and as this thing is frozen, you kind of flip it back to the hilt, and you just bury it inside of the, the entire like head of this spider. You keep pushing it down further and further and further, and eventually you see the spider like twitch for a second. And then the spell dissipates as it just collapses, its body curling up into this nasty little bubble of nasty spider. As you rip your sword out, it's just this green Icarus goo covering it. It stinks. Like It stinks. <laughs> dirty corpse stink. I get a flashback of what happened before. <laughs> For a moment, like, you see this valley in the distance, and suddenly you're just, like, kind of shivering a little bit, like, oh god. Ray's gonna have to roll a constitution sit. <laughs> <laughs> this is puked in my armor. <laughs> Alright, so that brings us to Absalus. If That should be the end of your turn. You don't have another action surge. Ian, I don't think no, you need I rolled it. a constitution saving <laughs> You feel it coming up, but you swallow it back no, down. No, it's a 14. I, I think I pass. <laughs> It'll get harder uh, as the oh, smells no. get worse. All right. So. Yeah, you kind of feel your stomach turn and like twist and kind of clench, and you start to feel like that that feeling of shit coming back up up your esophagus, and like you kind of like beat your chest with your shield arm and swallow hard and it, it goes away 
still a little nauseous, but it's it's not going to be debilitating or anything. Absolus is absolutely done taking this shit and is going to try and stab the spider with a rapier. Question. Answer. Can't I frost breath even while restrained? Uh, as long as your mouth is not covered, yes, you can. At the same time, this is spider webbing. You're technically it, covered. But yeah, that's the whole thing. Is it's up to the DM's discretion at that point. I mean, this spider literally wrapped you in webbing. So that's a fat no, nurse. So no, if you breathe out frost, you'll just have a cold mouth. mouth gag. For when this thing drags you to its lair and lays its babies in your stomach. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> <Rip>. Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> hey, hey <laughs> for, for all we know, that, that nurse will just turn around and become the spider queen. <laughs> There's just a bunch of frost spiders invade the fucking town. <laughs> All right, so... I have a plus zero to strength, so this is fine. Hey, I got a minus one, so you're, uh... The 22 to hit for 10 damage. Absolus is absolutely not taking this shit. And... Absolus's character sheet is all kinds of jank. Uh, there it is. They're gonna bust out a divine smizite. And we're gonna mark off their spell. So that's 18 points of damage against this thing. It's actually a very significant blow. You see, as Absalus like charges up their rapier with this blackish purple energy and immediately stabs this. Spider right in one of its eye sockets, digging in a little bit. And as it does, the pulse of this energy burns through it. You see, you just hear the spider screech and scream. Ah. Yeah, that should bring Absalus's turn to an end. There. Actually, gonna shift over one. Brings us to Aurora. You can't so do. Is that ever spider dead or? No, it's still alive. Okay. Fuck. You struggle and try, and you kind of feel as like, oh yeah, the webbing is giving, but immediately as you know, webs start to give, you just get wrapped up in more webs, <laughs> and you start to feel like small little. Things crawling around your body. Uh oh. Fire time. I swear to God. <laughs> All of you can hear Aurora in the back just. <laughs> I just look over like, oh, I better go help. That uh, brings us to Abigail. Alrighty. What do here? Um, sure, we'll try another guiding bolt at. Guiding bolt. This motherfucker. Uh, Shoot me. Pink uh, spider or right blue before, spider? Uh, pink spider. Okay. Last guiding bolt. Let's go. Can we hit? No, we cannot. All right. Spell slots used and very pissed off goblin. Again, you bitch. summon this like eagle form and you fire it off. But just at the last second, you see as the spider kind of like rears back to rewrap Aurora as she was almost breaking free. And you kind of turn your hand off to the side or else you would have blasted Aurora in the back of the head. And again, this like golden gilded eagle flies out and just nothing. It's very pretty to watch.
And that brings the end of your turn, or is there anything else you want to do? Not much I can do, because I can't summon Spiritual Weapon as a bonus action, because that's a second level spell slot. Uh, Le oof. You, dude, it's a free action, I'll just yell, FUCK! <laughs> as you yell, <laughs> the loud and aggressive laugh. fuck, 150 other spiders appear as you now awoken all of them. Kidding. It's Sydney's turn. I'm about to say 150. Well, goodbye this campaign. <laughs> Just these swarms of spiders. Which is actually a thing. You can actually have swarms of spiders. Mm -hmm. And they so, act as swarms. <laughs> I'm going to do my best and try and save Aurora. Remember, you have half movement. Yep, I'm not moving. Um, so I'm going to, again, cast Hold Person, my last spell, on pink. Um, it's 60 feet. And it's only 40 on pink. See if I can get it to, to not be better, to be paralyzed. Fuck! It's your spell, DC? I think it's 12, is it again? Hang on. I think it's 12. Oh, no. no, it's 13, because you... 13, yeah. Yeah. Hold up. Yeah! You see, as a spider locks in place, it still, like, has its uh, arms wrapped around uh, Aurora, but it's frozen there, paralyzed. It brings us again. Is there anything else you want to do on your turn? Uh, bonus action? You... I don't think you used your... Oh, yeah, you did use your bonus action, uh, your Bardic Inspiration. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Because we, we never took a long rest, so I never got my, my one back. Well, you did take a long rest, but you got it back, and then you used it in the next fight when uh, Absalos was fighting. You gave them Bardic Inspiration to yeah, reduce yeah. the uh, attack roll. The hit. That's what I was saying. After that fight, we never took a long rest, so I never, I never got it back. Yep, yep. Um... So I really can't do much in that aspect. Uh, I'm just going to sit here and look pretty. It's about that time that you hear Abigail scream fuck really loudly. And about the same time, you see is the nobles. It's 5, 10, 15. They're almost just like... Actually, I need to shift these down just one step. They're almost like out into the distance. They're like they're they're trying to book as fast as they can. The other handmaidens already like around the corner and hiding. Brings us back to the trap door of spiders. One of them is paralyzed. The other turns, shifts over a little bit, and dives down into its trap hole. What a cunt. The other one can't do anything, so, Ray, it's now your turn. Go fuck it up, right? Uh, okay, that's 5, 10, 15. I'm not close enough to hit it, so. Don't you have a ranged weapon? Throw a stick? Nope. Uh, okay, I'll throw a stick. <laughs> you... is, I'll throw a rock. I'll throw a rock. You, you put your sword down for a second, you pick up a rock, and you throw it, and it just bounces off the side of their frozen body. Even for all your strength. Does it do, like, one damage? Yeah, it just bounces off them. Because their body is frozen in place, the chitin just makes it pretty impervious to, like, rock attacks. They can stop the rock. Hmm, okay. The ad brings us to Absalus. It's going to take one step down and begin attempting to free Aurora by ripping them out of the cocoon. Fuck. Damn. It's a DC 12. <laughs> they're tearing through it and they're like pulling some of the webbing off, but there's a lot of webbing. 
And then, like, you kind of see occasionally uh, Absolutes will, like, kind of snap and, like, move their hands back as there you can actually see these tiny spiders crawling around the webbing. That disgusting. brings us to Aurora. You are caught in webs. There's a bunch of little creepy crawlies touching your skin all over. Oh, that's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I knew it would fucking work. <laughs> you all see as like almost like that anime explosion Aurora just like bursts out like kind of floating in the air for a second. And, like you just see the webs like descending off to the sides as they hit the ground as she just like is free and she lands. Uh Ray and Absolus can both see as this spider crawls into the back of her hair. It's your turn. Oh, that is your turn. Abigail. Yep, give me just a moment here. All right, uh, well... Uh, I guess Eldridge Blast, then, on Spider Pink. And it crits, too, doesn't it? Uh, it can, but spells are not what's working today, so... You summon up your Eldritch Blast, the bolts of this go gilded golden energy turning into, like, this almost spear as you fire it off. And it just kind of flies over this unmoving spider. You Wouldn't forgot you to put it on advantage. On yeah. Oh, well, ranged attacks don't have advantage, I don't think. It has to be a melee attack when they're restrained. Shit. Brings us to Sydney. Come on, slide. I really don't have anything at this point. Because I can't walk over there and use Thunder Wave. <laughs> you can walk over to Abigail and give them some words of encouragement. Stop fucking up. <laughs> Look, there are some days when being a caster is just suboptimal. Yeah. Um... Today seems to be that day and that this session where Abigail will hit nothing. Don't worry, you'll have plenty of other chances to have fun. Today. Anything, Sydney? You gonna move? You gonna fart? I'm reading this real quick. Aggressively uh, fondle yourself? Yeah, I'm just. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Safely move right behind Molly's ass. Why? Hmm. Okay. Why? Disgusting. <laughs> so Sydney, you just Disgusting. moved 15 feet? Yeah, uh, I moved 10. I just backed up behind Molly's butt. Alrighty. <clears throat> Brings us to the nobles. As you back up into them, they finally managed to get out of the uh, webbing. And they kind of move further. The trapdoor spider is going to try and save from whole person. And they do. They are no longer restrained, though. They can't do anything else on this turn. So, Ray. 
You can be the hero. The one they call... Rhea King. Rhea King. Rhea King. Smack that spider. Nope, you missed. No, I missed. You're not the hero. You're not the hero. Go <laughs> back did. to your hovel. You sw I have no home. Wait, swing again. It's supposed to be at advantage. But it's not restrained anymore, remember? Oh, no, it's not. Just kidding. It's not at advantage. You swing Rhea thinking it's not going to move, no, and it just... It. You said it. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> you swing at the spider and thinking that it's not going to move in like this imagination where you like carve through the spider like from the snout all the way to its butt. The image is there and as you do so it grabs your sword with its mandible and just throws you off and you can almost hear it just <laughs> laughing and mocking you. Alright. <sighs> you have oh, a... Hurting hands. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Joking. I, I don't have spells. I can't use spells. I'm a fighter. Actually, if you're an Eldritch Knight, you'd absolutely be able I to know. use burning hands, but no. Nah. You're just a Fetor. You're only a but fighter. But I can get another martial archetype later on. I'm pretty sure. Ooh, champion, yeah, you get an extra one. At, like, level 11 or 13 or some shit. That brings us to Absolus. Who, after seeing Aurora have this amazing, like, dolphin breaking the surface of the water, bursting out of this webbing, kind of just, like, shrugs, steps around, fucking remove the spiders. and just tries to stab at this spider. You know, I didn't think spiders would give us this much trouble, but spellcasters can't hit spells, and... Apparently neither can anyone else. I mean, I've I have hit all of job. them. Yeah. Oh yeah, Aurora has actually hit all of her. <laughs> oh shit, you had to roll a concentration check. I forgot to double check that, because you took damage. You had to beat a DC of 10. How do I do that? You click on Constitution saving throw. Yeah, you maintain concentration on your spell. You still have Frost Breath. Because Absolus swings out with a rapier, and as it, like, knocks Ray away, immediately the rapier comes in, and it, like, parries it with one of its hands. You see as the eyes are just, like... These turned eyes are just too hard for you guys to beat. Because it literally parries a rapier with its, like, arm and just ka -ching, and knocks a, bisous, a blisterless away. Which brings us to the coldest the spider, bitch in the... No. <laughs> the spider is going to live. <laughs> the spider casts invisibility and disappears. <laughs> it actually does have <laughs> invisibility because I was trying to give it a freaking... No, it doesn't cast invisibility. It's your turn, Aurora. Well. Out of pure anger, I will absolutely murder this fucking spider. Fifteen is six. Yeah, even if it saved, it would have died. With a massive, deep breath, you blow out this just cone of frost. The entire ground freezes over. You see as all of the webbing beneath it just, like, ices over. And the entire spider just turns to ice as it tries to rear up, its body contorting back inside of itself, but it doesn't get enough time. It just freezes in place, kind of held up. Eat it. Alright, let's get out of here. The other spider already having its meal is no longer interested after suffering some pretty grievous wounds. Well, it fucking better not be, motherfucker. I'm assuming that you're all going to leave and not try and kill that spider. 
Oh, I'm gonna. I'm very pissed. I'm going to definitely try and kill the spider with my crossbow bolts that I realize that I now have in my inventory. <laughs> oh God, I want to murder it. Well, if you guys can figure out where its trapdoor is. Hmm. I'm not bothering with that though. Let's see what do we got here? Where is it? Uh, well, so did we see where the the girl got dragged in at? The other handmaid. Um, the front end of the party did really good. Get a good look. Uh, who would have seen it? Um, the only person that probably would have saw it was uh, Yilda, uh, the handmaiden, and uh, Lady Shrew, but they both booked it. Uh, Aurora, you would have saw it if not for the other spider that uh, attacked towards Sydney, catching your attention. And Absalus had their back towards the spider when it came out, along with most of the rest of the party. Except for uh, you, I believe you actually had another spider. Or no, Ray had a spider attack then, right in front of you. So, I mean, nobody else would have actually saw exactly where, but you could probably investigate for a little while. Try and find where this little trap door is. Mm. Sure, I'll make an investigation check real quick. Yeah, that's not going to go over very well. You're looking around and it's just hard ground everywhere. You're like stomping, you're hitting the ground, you even take your like... Uh, Warhammer out and kind of like hit the ground every so often and kind of like try and pull the dirt away and it's just more dirt underneath and You can't find any loose soil anywhere and much less the actual trap door entrance Somebody Can I go. freeze any tiny spider that is on me? Uh, what tiny spiders? Yeah, you actually see his Aurora just like on me covers herself in like water and freezes it for a moment before her letting it go as it breaks just like falling all around her and you just see her like shiver and do the like ew ew icky icky dance huh. and like you actually see a few spiders drop and hit the ground these little itty bitty tiny ones roughly like the size of a penny you kind of see as she like starts shaking her hair out and like freaking out a little bit Is there anything else that you want to do, or are you all trying to get the hell out of here? Okay, I'm that's, getting the fuck out of here. Yeah, I think that's going to be the yeah, general rule of thumb. So you all pile in together, catching up with uh, Molly and the nobles. You all manage to, like, catch up, get together, you reform. You all see that Sydney has this gash, like, down her leg that's just bleeding profusely. She's barely, like, limping to keep up with the rest of you. How much does Sydney weigh? Uh, a lot less than carrying shit, too. Fair uh, enough. Sydney would probably be say, roughly like a hundred and thirty pounds for their. Actually, no, you're kind of small, so probably around like one twenty. Plus their gear. It says one forty on my chart. Uh, well, you're fat, so you weigh one hundred and forty. So you have Sydney, who personally weighs 140, plus their geared equipment, plus the extra 50 pounds of gold bars in their backpack. I'd be willing to carry the extra 50 pounds of the gold bars. It's okay, I'm just going to slowly limp myself until I die. Okay. You see, Absalus walks up to you and puts his hand on your uh, wound, and they charge you full of energy. And yeah, level four, they never increase their thing. Yeah. So, if I'm not mistaken, it's five points per paladin level. But I should double yeah, check. Yeah, it, yeah. For every paladin level, they get five points to their way on hands pool. 
Yeah, uh, Absolus has it at just 5. So, I mean, at level 4, they would have 20 points. They're going to go ahead and dump uh, 15 points of health back into you. Into yeah. Okay. So, go ahead and regen 15 points of HP. Yeah, so they'll put me at 22. And you're no longer on the verge of death. You're, yeah, your leg still hurts, but the wound has pretty much closed. It's just heavily bruised. It's still kind of like a pain, but it's not bad. Yeah, it's bearable. And as the party reconnects, everybody gets back together and you begin marching onward, uh, putting these danger spiders behind you. The thought of the one escaping still torments Ag Ag Abigail ever so slightly. It's like that irk where you'll see like occasionally their face will contort a little bit in anger. you all move on eventually finding yourselves at the outskirts of Brathus. yeah we did it i'm so taking a freezing shower when we get back in town yeah we did it so as you all come back in you all get to the front gates the uh, Molly obviously leaves her stuff, like, you strip Molly down, taking all of the gear off the river and all the other stuff that she was dragging for you. It kind of sits next to the place called The Inn, where you all were once staying for some given point of time. Uh, the guards, they don't even bother, like, questioning you as they see the nobles. Pretty much the moment that the town is inside, they go rushing inside to go speak with the guard captain before disappearing further inside. Um, moments later, the handmaiden comes back, literally sprinting back to you guys. And she kind of catches her breath and just, Adventurers, if, if you'd wait in the inn, the, the royals are going to gather your reward. They'll have a god send it to you uh, post-haste. <sighs> and you see her kind of like turn and like wheezingly start trying to like jog back. You all find yourselves back in the lovely town of Brathis. It's mid-afternoon. The sun is starting to go down ever so slightly. This town is still hustle and bustle as you left it. There doesn't seem to be much change. Cool. Uh, I'm going to make my way to um, not the inn. I'm going to go to the noble's house that I was across the bridge. Right. I'm going to the inn. I need a drink. Almost immediately, you see Absalus just following Ray straight into the actual inn. And just parks themselves right next to you. They sit down, their shield on their back, sword at the hip. They kind of like pop their neck and stretch their back out a little bit. And they give you another nod. Still relatively quiet, but you can kind of see that their shoulders are lifted back up again. Uh, Sydney, we'll Where get to you I in just a bit. take a shower? Yeah, I'll stay here. Uh, you can take a shower at the inn. Back here. Of course, you actually have to pay for a bath. So, or, okay, fuck that. It's like five copper. It's just so that you have somebody that brings you warm water from the kitchen. Either that, or you can take a freezing cold want water. Warm water. Yeah, then you can just like go back there and just be like, hey, I'm using the bath, and yeah. You tell uh, the inn proprietress that you're going to go take a shower. The uh, bar hand that's back here kind of like sees you, steps aside, and like she starts setting up like what you would assume is like a curtain thing. But she's like pins it up on the sides and then she stands with her back towards it and kind of like crosses her arms as you strip butt naked and hop into an ice bath. Abigail, is there anything that you wanted to do? Can I freeze water or make it extra cold? Yeah. We'll say use the control water cantrip and 
you are now frozen under the surface of water. Yeah, that's it. Shape water. There's going to be a long, silent moment of contemplation before she goes to try to find a place to sell most of the excess baggage that we have. So any of like, the weapons we picked up or anything we took with us, thanks to the mule. Oh yeah, or... there was a long sword, wasn't there? There's quite a few things. If you check the uh, player info, you'll see you have the loot from the dead and what's in the treasure room. Goodbye, trapdoor spiders. May I have the plus one longsword? Hey, that's for you guys to discuss once you get back together. Uh, cutting back down to Sydney, yeah. as you slightly limp your way to the guard captain. Uh, you remember this person as guard captain Nathan. He kind of like stops you for a moment. He's like, oh yes, the, the adventurers that uh, came on through. I assume you're here for a meeting with the nobles, but... They've purposely requested privacy for quite some time. If you wouldn't mind just coming back tomorrow, we'll be glad to allow you to visit. Okay, sounds good. I'll be back tomorrow. You see as uh, the two guards on the gate that watched you approach, uh, Gaelic and Malik, or Gaelic and Malik, you walk by and like one of them winks at you and the other one like as you pay attention to him the other one kind of like pinches your butt as you pass through. <laughs> I'm going to cast vicious no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna completely ignore it and keep moving on. Gonna make my way to the inn that everyone else. Uh, Abigail, the guards up front, they actually, like, grab the sides of the sled and they kind of, like, push it in. And they push it into, like, the little stables that are in the back where Aurora is taking her, uh, little bath. And they push the cart into the stable and, uh, one of the guards kind of, like, stands near it. Let's say Barry, the guard. He kind of just stays over near it and kind of guarding it. There's a back door here that allows you to lead in. Um, as you kind of like peruse town looking for general shops or anything, you, you know that there's an armor here, there's a clother, there's a librarian, uh, there's an alchemist in town, there's the two inns, but there's not really like a general shop here. There's not a general sundries or a proper trader that would be in this area that you know of. But uh, I'm, I'm actually going to go to an inn. You uh, are at the inn. I'm retracting my statement. I'm going to go in, pay for a room, and go past the fuck out. Alrighty. Well, is there anything more pressing that you guys would like to do at current? Uh, I know that Abigail, you wanted to look for somebody that would help trade and barter with you. Uh, we can yeah. get to that uh, a little bit later. I'm going to quietly get up and uh, head over to the inn owner uh, and ask her about that job that she wanted me to do. She just gives you a wink, and she doesn't say anything beyond that. I give a nod and go sit back down next to Absalus. Uh, Absalus actually... Uh... Orders around of drinks. You see, as the proprietor doesn't actually charge you for the drinks that you have, it's just some like almost ditch water ale. It's very low quality, but I mean, it gets the job done. It's alcoholic. It's not poisonous. I don't mind. I'm gonna pay for another <sighs> room as well, actually, and just go rest. You see, as Absalus kind of does a very similar thing, taking one of the other rooms in the back. Uh, Aurora, as you are sitting in this bath, you begin to just instinctually use your control of water, making the bath water grow colder 
and colder until there's small bricks of like frost and ice beginning to form over the top. You take a moment and I'll DM this to you when we go on a quick break. Uh, you finish your channeling and you kind of wake back up. The water warms back up a little bit. It's still pretty chilly as the sun is starting to go down. Uh, Becca, the waitress, actually kind of like knocks and makes sure that you're okay. Verify you're all right. You get up. You she hands you like this uh, woolen towel that you dry yourself off. You get dressed and you head back into the inn. Um, I know it doesn't look like there's more rooms in here. There are more rooms upstairs. The staircase is right here, so there are more rooms. I just I didn't feel like making an upstairs for this place because I'm lazy. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. So, as Aurora, uh, you walk back into the tavern. Absolus, Ray, and Sydney are gone. And from what you can tell, there's a few drinks that were had here, and then people broke to just go to sleep. Uh, you haven't seen Abigail, though while you were walking back inside, you did see that there was a guard protecting the uh, trade cart that you guys had. Okay, so... I would like to walk towards the owner. Okay. And ask if there is a blacksmith I can talk to. Uh, the owner kind of gives you a nod. She's like, um, yes, it's not the greatest uh, blacksmith. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there are better blacksmiths just literally anywhere. But Bernard the Mediocre at least does honest work and charges honest cost for whatever he does. He's uh, just across the way to the north. That way. I thank her and go on my way. She pinches your butt as you walk away. Bruh. I will absolutely smack her with a cold hand you slap her in the face and she kind of smiles and gives you a wink as you walk on by as you Bitch uh, doesn't even care um aurora and abigail as the both of you are going to go on a shopping spree really quick Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and say that we're going to take a quick break here so that everybody can use the bathroom and... Uh, something I should note now, uh, I won't be able to play much longer because I do have to get ready for work, uh, which I have at 7 p.m. I leave it for it at 6. I have to go at 1.30 my time, which is in like an hour and 45. So, yeah, we'll, so. We're not going to play too much longer. It's just going to take a quick break so that you guys can get drinks or grab a snack or use the bathroom. Gotcha. So we'll be back at, um, we'll say right at uh, 2.55 my time, which is like 3.55 for you, whatever. Yeah, sure. yeah, the 55 marker. Yeah, 55 marker. Alrighty. Ready? About 10 minutes, yeah. Yeah. Break. Don't let that stop. Keep digging. 
So Bruce and I change the mind. I'll go with Bruce and John can go with Clark. What's that? What's with them? Super. I can do it. I don't know men. I may I have this dance? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Wayne. Josh, he's still here. Actually, scratch that. I got to leave now. I got to get some chores done. I'm sorry, guys. No worries. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, check you all later. Yep. Yeah, see you. <clears throat> okay. e. So Abigail just proceeds to go to the inn for the night and goes to sleep. Um, let's see, there's still a few minutes left. Y'all guys still need some more time? I'm, I'm good. I found a good meme that represents 2020 in a nutshell. I'm going to put it in a campaign off chat. Alrighty, so... Bringing us back in, uh, Sydney, Ray, Absalus, and Abigail have retired for the night. Aurora, you found yourself at the uh, blacksmith across the road to the north. The door is open in the front. There's an open breezeway beyond that. You can kind of hear somebody working in the back. Just sounds like uh, gentle hammering, as if somebody's trying to... Uh, Kind of just mold something a little bit better. A little bit of like uh, filing every so often. What would you like to do? Is it, is it the next day? Mm -mm. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm not coming out of my, my slumber until the next day. Well, yeah, I'm assuming that once you guys go down for the night, you're taking a long rest and you're not going to be awake until the next morning. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Except I'm here. Aurora's all like, all up in there. Ha. 
I don't know if 2020... Oh, actually, yeah, 2020, it's the DM rolling 20s. Double over. When the DM rolls two criticals, you're fucked. Sorry, that was meme stuff. Um, Aurora, you went to the blacksmith. You walk in and the front door is open. Um, let me check my notes real quick. Alright, so this place is literally called, uh, it just has a sign over the front. It says, Bernard Smithing. Uh, you walk in through the doors, there's a breezeway that kind of like opens up into a main like establishment. Uh, from the outside you actually saw that there's a house connected to the far side. You can kind of hear somebody hammering around the corner. And uh, occasionally you'll hear like metal on metal filing. It's very gentle, it's not like screeching or anything. As you pop around the corner you see this kind of slack-jawed, uh, middleweight, uh, male figure standing there. He has, like, a hammer in one hand, a uh, file in the other, and he seems to be, like, working on something. You can't quite tell from your vantage, but you walk around the corner and you see him. He kind of, like, puts his stuff down. He looks up at you. He kind of, like, wipes his hands off on an apron and then extends a hand to shake your hand. Uh, hello there. Um... Bernard, they call me Bernard the Blacksmith, or if you're one of the mean people, Bernard the Mediocre. They're gonna help you. I don't think we should shake hands as I show my pale hand. He, he grips your hand, and the leather glove kind of like has a little bit of uh, frost on it. And he doesn't really pay much attention, but he just kind of shakes your hand and let's go. Hey, can I help you with? Is there something you need in particular? Is there anywhere I can sell? Um... Uh, your best bet will probably be going over to, uh... It, it's a actual city nearby called Crow's Eye to the, uh... To the east of here, if you follow the path out. It's about ten miles down the road. A bit far, but they have actual merchants and traders and stuff. Here, it's just most of us just work, you know, for the town. It's not much here. I mean, if you have like iron or metals and stuff, I, I might be able to purchase a few of them off of you. I could use them to make horseshoes or bodings or nails, or I could make, uh, Metal rods, I can uh, uh, make uh, 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 um, other things, yeah. Did you just have a stroke? <laughs> yeah, did you just have a I have gold stroke? bars, does that count? Uh, you have gold bars? Why would anybody make a bar out of gold? They don't look like they would even hold up much, they, they bend too easy. This guy is a fucking idiot. <laughs> I pull one out of my bag. You kind of like... <laughs> Watch me get arrested for them thinking I stole shit. He looks at it for a second. That's fool's gold. It's probably not even real. I wouldn't buy that. 
You see, he, like, one of his eyes kind of, like, starts drifting off to, like... Like, his left eye is drifting further and further to the left, but his right eye is still focused on you. What the fuck is wrong with him? There's and a reason why he's called the me. mediocre. <laughs> yeah, he, he did check it. That's That's what he did. It was an intelligence check, and he has a minus two to intelligence. He rolled a four. Oh my god! For a total of two. <laughs> just go to just go to bed, Aurora. <laughs> it kind of like grabs it, and kind of smacks it against the wall, and he hands it back to you. It's no hard notes, break okay, wood. Thank you for helping, anyway. Uh, uh, need any whole shoes? He kind of like looks at your feet for a second. <laughs> like, I don't think you'll need them. It might hurt putting the nails in. Oh, God. When I, I just walked away. When I was a kid, I put the square in the circle box. <laughs> As you walk away, you see him kind of like turn and like grab the file and like file his tooth a little bit. Like, in between the crevices. Fucking nice. And then he, like, goes back to doing what he was doing. <laughs> and I rolled his character very poorly. <laughs> Obviously. I couldn't, couldn't tell. <laughs> okay, I have an idea. Let's get down to business. Can I walk into Sydney's room? Oh. Whoa. Ooh, yes. Te technically, there's no door, so come on in! You go up to the door, and despite the fact that I didn't draw fucking doors then, because Sydney's a giant wanker, there are doors, and there's locks on the inside. So I'm assuming that when you go and lay down for the night, the doors are locked. Uh, you don't know which door Sydney's in, as you weren't inside when Sydney actually went to her room. But on the downstairs, there's three, or on the downstairs, there's four rooms, and on the upstairs, there's four rooms. So if you want to just take a random guess, you can roll a 1d8, or you can just ask, like, the innkeeper. Where's that bard in? She literally just points around the corner to the first room that you were just at. Like, right as you walk in and come around. Like, yeah, right there. Knock, knock, motherfucker. Okay, is the door locked? Sydney, did you lock the door before you decided to uh, go lay down? Nope. The door is not locked. Come on in, sugar tits. <laughs> Jesus, dude. <laughs> Love you, Nate. That's, uh... <laughs> oh, God. What have I created? <laughs> what have you done? Again, literally the best D&D campaign you will ever run. Okay, I want to sneakily walk in and literally just jump on her with my extremely cold body. Uh, roll a stealth check. Ah, oh, fuck! <laughs> like a fucking goat. Actually, no, uh, Sydney, roll a perception check. Alright, hang on, let me fill my thing up. Because I don't think you're asleep just yet. No, Unless you are asleep. Not. Well, I mean, technically it's only been a matter of minutes. So, um... What am I, what am I rolling? Uh, perception check. Perception. And I have to beat 19? Yep. Here it is. Ah, <gasps> oh, fuck! <laughs> I know. Sydney, you're in the middle of, like, changing into, like, your uh, small clothes. Yeah, I'll stand here. And, like, you sit on the bed and kind of, like, stretch, and you're about to fall back when immediately this ice-cold body just slams into you. And immediately, just, your entire body tenses up. 
your like leg wound starts acting up and starts hurting more as like this frozen woman is now laying on top of you. The only thing I can think of is nurse breaking the door in, jumping in the air, and, and in mid-jump, all I hear her say is, Watch out, watch out, it's John Cena! <laughs> Oh. As you get John Cena by the Frost Woman. Stay who's, strapped or get clapped, bitch. <laughs> is still wearing all of her gear and her backpack full of, like, heavy uh, gold oh, ingots. Oh, no. I want you, Aurora, to roll a 1d6. Oh. So you're going to damage me. God damn it, nurse. <laughs> Sydney. Yeah. You take four points of bludgeoning as Aurora slams into you with the weight of, like, three people. You got RKO'd, dude. <laughs> you literally just eight. got John cena I have 18 health now. Jane cena <laughs> Yeah. Right, you do actually probably do hear this loud... <laughs> John cena <laughs> I immediately, like, wake up without... I've already taken all my armor off. I walk out in my common clothing and, like, walk to their room. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on in here? The door is open and you just see Aurora pinning down Sydney, like, laying flat on top of Sydney, Like, arms spread, like, doing the fucking, like, T-pose. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, flat. And you see Sydney just, like, squashed underneath, gasping for air. I'm just gonna turn around and just walk back into my room. <laughs> Remember, folks, lock your doors. That's a good idea. I'm I'm gonna lock my door and then just <laughs> go to sleep. <laughs> All right, Aurora, you just crushed Sydney under your freezing cold weight. What would you? intend to do you may resume okay i get off her and laugh which afterwards i leave in haste <laughs> you're lucky you're lucky bitch that my i can't use any of my spells because i definitely would have <laughs> Just thunder wave, break out the fucking front door. <laughs> oh, I could have thunder waved. Fuck, that's right. I was gonna do a whole person. <laughs> yeah, if you actually cast thunder wave and she fails the constitution save, she takes the damage and she gets knocked 15 feet away. Yeah. So you could literally oh, launch her ass nice. into the air. Mm -hmm. And then she would also take damage from falling. <laughs> 20 feet. <laughs> From the bed, like, up to the ceiling, and then back down. <laughs> Aurora, why don't, you, uh, why don't you come back in here? Come here. Come sit next to me. All right. Uh, <laughs> Aurora, what did you say a second ago? I'm sorry. I missed it. I said I would get off her laugh and then leave fast. With haste. Yeah. All right. So you leave. You're back into the dining area. Uh, Quinn is still standing there against the wall. Uh, the waitresses don't seem to really be doing much. They're just kind of like... You see as one is just talking to the cook. The other one is cleaning the bath water out. It's not much really going on. There's not any other patrons in here right now. Okay, can I ask for a room? She just kind of nods at you. She hands you, like, one of the uh, small keys that's hanging behind her. She points to the uh, corner room. How uh, much? Uh, don't worry about it. It's Someone owes me a favor, and I'm giving them a little bit extra so I can really take as much from that favor as I can. Yikes. I really should have not. Ah... Uh agreed to that favor. You done okay then. Up. I done I did done fuck up. Mm -hmm. 
So I peek at Sydney's room and say, "Lock the damn door." You peek at Sydney's room. Sydney, being the very flirtatious bard that they are, are no longer sleeping in small clothes. They are buck naked on top of the sheets. Amen. What the fuck? Yeah, you get a full view of Harry Beaver. Uh, no, bitch. <laughs> She's shaved. She is shaved. <laughs> what do you mean, she? It's you. <laughs> she, Sydney, is shaved. Yes, you are Sydney. Mm -hmm. So you I are saved. You want to see my shit? I'll send you a picture of my shit. Let's see it. Shit. <laughs> God damn, dude. Listen, right, me and Josh are family, literally. Oh, so. God. <laughs> there are some things that you don't want to see twice in one life. <laughs> yeah. Look I'm just gonna thunder wave the wall next to me so it all just flies in my room. <laughs> the table and chair just fly and hit the wall breaking. Looks like that favor you're gonna have, Ray, is gonna be a lot bigger once I destroy half this tavern. I swear to god if you make this force for me. <laughs> I'm kind of worried about what the favor is, dude. Yeah. I can't, I can't really imagine. You need to fuck her. That's uh, it. Uh... Good god. Yikes. Laura said it, not me. What have we done to your campaign? <laughs> Bunch of hoes, I swear. I mean, let's not forget that a, a fucking Aurora just body slammed me. She just Santina Jackson. It was to send a message. <laughs> Stay strapped and clapped. <laughs> Stay strapped or get clapped. Little, 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 little. Okay, in. I'll just remove my clothing and pass out with my door lock, may I add? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to add something into campaign off chat, and this is what I picture spot on what Aurora would be doing. The night passes, make sure that you hit your uh, long rest button on your character sheet. Should be just underneath your speed for those of you who are blind. I did it. Good. Yep. You've all taken a long rest. The mid-morning comes as you've all kind of slept in an extra hour or so. You all awaken to the smell of uh, breakfast already being cooked. It's another slightly cool day. Still kind of like a little damp. You don't really hear much noise beyond like the cooking of the kitchen down below or uh, across the way. Uh, Abigail is still in her room. Uh, Absalus still sleeping in their room as well. There's the three of you. 
together. Okie dokie. Alright, I'm gonna just uh, keep my armor in that room, just have my sword on me, but I'm just gonna be in my common clothing. You see as Ray wearing this common clothing, but you've never actually seen Ray outside of armor so far, Sydney. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the first time that you've actually not only seen their face, but their body as well. As their clothes are a little bit loose, they're not like, you know, form-fitting or refined like uh, the clothes that you're used to wearing. Noted. I just give a nod to uh, Sydney. I nod in return while I'm still butt naked because I haven't changed clothes. <laughs> I'm, uh... I'm just gonna go ahead and veto that and say that you at least put on your fine clothes before walking out. No, I put all my armor and everything back on. You don't have armor, do you? Wait, do you wear leather, right? Yeah. Alright, so... Again, you see uh, Sydney is uh, dressed up in this like nice, uh, breezy attire. The leather armor strapped across the main portions of their body with a few uh, wrist guards and some uh, like ankle and leg guards. A moment later, you see Aurora... Pop around the corner, still wearing her uh, professor robes. This blue uh, dyed armor. Well, not armor, but like cloth garb. Like a robe? Essentially, yes. Okay. No. Aurora, no. <sighs> I, I veto you guys walking around the city or this tavern naked in any form. <laughs> Great minds, think alike. As I get a fucking private DM from Aurora on here, a whisper. I want to walk out wearing blue lingerie. Please. <laughs> I mean, technically at clothing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh we, we're, we're all in the tavern oh. right here. The mystical voice come from the sky no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, voice. oh my god oh. do not make me move this fucking campaign like seven sessions ahead i will raid this fucking bitch <laughs> look i gotta fuck someone <laughs> what the fuck oh. the campaign's we're just in, like... Just kidding. Meme territory at the moment. All of you suffer 10 psychic damage, I as I am just... Arm. Hey, hey, I'm not... I'm, I'm clothed. I'm not doing no, anything. Please. There's just this wave of just anger that hits the back of your heads, all of you simultaneously. As if somebody just, like, walked up and just slapped the shit out of the back of your skull. You suffer a hundred points of psychic damage. End of campaign. And I'm dead. And I'm dead. Every, all three of you have to reroll new characters. <laughs> God damn it. All right. <laughs> all right. So the three of you wearing at least normal-ish clothes. Sydney fully armored and geared up. Ray wearing their regular common clothes that they normally have to wear underneath their armor. Now just... In a normal sense, if you have a specific description that you want to use for your common clothes, you can go for it. Uh, I'm gonna kind of drop a picture. I'll find kind of. Uh, Aurora, I'm assuming that you are wearing your regular robes, or are you going to switch into one of the other dresses that you have, or... You're going to dress in dude's clothes, man. I, I don't care what you do. You're not walking out in lingerie, though. We'll have the bikini spa video later, like, in a few sessions. You can go to a fucking spa, and you can all be naked together. I don't care. But that's later. Okay, can I ask for food? You're gonna get grabbed by the guards. If I take you away. Aurora, you raise your hand like a... You raise your hand, kind of like a school child, 
the like the kids that she used to teach, you raise your hand, waving it in the air a little bit. You see as Quinyesha kind of like looks at you for a second, like she drops her chin and like kind of like points her forehead towards you, looking at you. She looks over to the waitress who starts bringing food over already. She comes and sets it on the table, granting all of you um, what appear to be these little like uh, flower pastries in a flat shape. They're kind of golden brown on top. You can kind of tell that there's uh, like this yellow substance that's been smeared across the top that's a bit melted into it. Uh, there's some uh, eggs that look like they've just been beaten and whipped. They're very fluffy and creamy. Uh, and a few pieces of what appears to be like pan-seared ham that's been cut into strips. And she drops one plate off for all three of you. Along with uh, three tankards that she just leaves on the table before walking back. And she comes back with this pitcher and fills up your three tankards with this orangish juice that has pulp in it. That's kind of what Ray looks like. I'll give somebody... F I'm gonna eat slowly. A free high five. I will as well. If you can tell me what I just described as food. I wasn't paying attention because uh, I was delicious. looking for my Yes, it's delicious, I suppose, but I, I was would say I would I would say at least the pulp part. Just by you, by you saying pulp, I would think it's some kind of orange juice. And did you guys hear anything else beyond that? The food, kind of, but then I, I, kind I of heard got bacon, lost. eggs. Yeah. Kind of got lost when you were saying this thing. Oh, come on, nurse! You have one more thing. One more thing. Bacon is in strips. Ham. And so that stripped ham. Egg looked like beaten up. So it's 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 bacon, which is ham that's been cut into strips and pan seared. Yeah. They have eggs that were whipped, so scrambled eggs. There is these flat pastries that have this yellow liquid that was spread across the top. So it looks like it melted into it. Butter. Pancakes. There you go. Aurora, you get a high five from the DM. I Fuck take yeah. back my psychic slap that would have caused all three of you to reroll characters. <laughs> He dying. No. Come on, one. Just fucking nut. Two. You fucking cock. Sorry, the person in the yard decided doing uh, dirt biking in it. So you guys might just hear dirt. All right. So the three of you slowly eat your breakfast, drink your orange juice. And what do you guys have planned for today? Abigail doesn't seem to be joining you, and uh, Absalus well, seems to be asleep still. We were told that the nobles were going to meet us here in the morning, so we're all gathered here waiting for them to arrive. <clears throat> yeah. But I was I wanted to go across the bridge. Oh, yeah, I caught Charmander. Um... That's what I was initially going to do yesterday, so I was told to come back. So, Alrighty. So you're heading across the bridge? Aye! Woo! Uh, before you take off too far, 
Uh, Ray, is there anything specific that you wanted to do, to do today? Bring, sit. I only have nine minutes, so or six minutes, so. Alrighty, well, Ray begins ordering beverage after beverage of a relatively high alcohol count. Somehow still not getting charged for any of this, but he ends up drinking a pretty profuse amount, and then we'll go ahead and say that that's where you will retire for the day. Yes, I'll go back to that room. All right, have a good day. Uh... Oh, yeah. does she want something? Nope, not yet. You know, we'll get to that next time. Right. All right. Uh... Yeah, have a good night. I'll man. follow Sydney. Laters. So, Aurora and Sydney. Sydney. Mm hmm. I'm DMing for only two people now. You both begin walking down to, uh, down towards the noble's house. Mm hmm. Well, the guard captain, because I gotta approach him first. Uh, this. There. My camera movements are working again. Uh huh. It's still pretty early in the morning, and as you whoa, as you approach the guard captain, you can actually see coming up behind him is the handmaiden that you helped rescue. Yeah. And she's kind of like going out towards you guys. And the guard captain kind of like looks at you and kind of gives you a nod. And he's, ah, Miss Lady Burning Song, uh, it's good to see you again so bright and early. Um, I'm assuming you're here for, uh, he doesn't even get a chance to stop before she just kind of like bursts past and catches the both of you. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm handmaid of Dielda, I'm, I'm here on behalf of the Lord and Lady. I meant to give you this, uh, this specific, um, payment here. It's, it's an order if you take it to, well, you're already at the guard, Captain. Um, I suppose that, uh... Uh, Nathan, if you'd be so kind, would you mind just taking them to grant their payment? And she hands him a letter. He kind of like pops it open and reads it for a second. He kind of like nods. He's like, all right. And he... And he turns around. Yells at this guy, just... Nick, get the fuck out of the way. Oh, no. And he moves, and you see as the handmaiden, instead of running back, ends up taking off running the other way. Vicious? And the guard captain walks you over. And he keeps walking. Then he comes this way a little bit. Then he goes up here. Then he goes back this way, then that way. Then down over here, then he goes back to this door, and then he pops inside. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> He's OCD, OCD, OCD. Yeah. All right, you're not on top of somebody. I thought you were there. Uh, inside. Holy shit! I knew I forgot something. I always forget something. The people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if they were going to survive or not, so I didn't put them in here, and then I forgot to actually put them in here. <laughs> ho 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 ho! He he. It's a good thing nobody else can see this magical DM stuff that I'm totally doing. Yeah. Ta-da. Oh, oh, look, they came from downstairs. They came from upstairs. Yeah, that's what I meant. Same thing. Um, you walk in, and you actually see as uh, Quentin, or Lord Quentin, he steps forward. Uh, Tessa is actually sitting there. She's actually kind of like giddy and moving side to side, excited that her husband has returned home. And Lady Anya Shrew follows uh, Nobleman Quentin downstairs before coming over and spotting you. And, uh... <laughs> I was really hoping that the rest of the party was going to be here for this. Well, can, can I say something really quickly? Hmm? 
So, okay, it is just us three. I was making sure. Earlier, um, when me and Nurse were on, we were waiting. It was like 1220 or something. Um, nurse was telling me what they said. And then I was like, okay. And the nurse was like, I'll be back in a minute. And so I was sitting in our chat waiting. <clears throat> I was sending emails and shit. And was it Ray or somebody popped in and were like, yeah, we haven't heard anything. We have shit to do. We're leaving. And then he leaves. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, okay. I was like, I was like, you guys know that one. He could be dealing stuff with his roommates. Like, it could just be something simple. Like, there's no reason just to dip. Real quick. So, anyway, well, they're not here, so that's not that's not a it's not our fault. So, their loss, our gain. Well, let's go. So as you all approach, yeah, I warned him that they were kind of being weird. Yeah. I'm still recording, by the way. I'm going to have to edit all this shit out. Yep. Shit. Good. I'll help you edit. I got you, bro. Oh, bro, I have like 16 hours that I have to edit. Yeah. All right, so the both of you walk in. Uh, Aurora, this is your first time walking into the noble's house. It's three stories tall, and it has a, like, just this... It's not massive, it's just tall. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of space, and as you walk inside, it's kind of... It's not as glamorous as you would expect it to be. Like, from your own home and your own memories, the same thing with you, Sydney, as the both of you think back to your previous home lives, you lived in relative luxury. And these people are living, like... The inn has worse things in here. But this isn't that much of a step up. Hmm. Noted. You see as uh, Lady Shrew approaches you, and it looks like she's about to say something before Quentin stops her. I'm going to move you guys around so that this scene fits a little bit better. Because... Uh -huh. Fuck. I'll just move everybody over here. The guard cap just gonna stay there. I don't give a shit. Um, Lady on your shoe. She comes flying down the stairs after Nobleman Quinton, who takes a quick turn and grabs his, the hand of uh, Tessa, his wife. And while holding her hand, kind of like holding it up in the air, like as if guiding her with him. You see on your shoe, like she comes downstairs. She kind of like overshoots like the bottom of the staircase and like swings around, almost like flanking you. And for a moment, it kind of catches you off guard because she has a scowl on her face. Like, you let my handmaiden die. You do realize. And then Quentin stops her for a moment. He's like, just allow me, Lady Shrew. This is my domain. You do realize that you allowed one of the royal handmaidens to perish. Whatever my wife promised you, it was for my safekeeping and return, which you have done. And while I would love to honor that deal, the money that we were supposed to use to be able to pay you that came from the state is apparently gone missing. The chests of gold that's meant to be paying for all of this are missing. They were with... Lady Anya Shrew, who was delivering them to me, captured by the smugglers. Mm -hmm. We do not have the currency to pay you or anything more than this. And he hands you a bag with about 50 coins. They're all gold pieces in it. I'm going to stop him in mid-tracks. Keep your gold. Keep it. And as I pursue, I hand over all the gold that I brought from the chest that I carried. And I say, this belongs to you guys. You guys need to keep on. Hold on to it. You begin, like, opening your bag. And the moment that you pull out a single golden bar, you see the guard captain draw his sword. You see Lady on your shrew kind of, like, stiffens up and, like, gives a look of just a gasp. 
And Lord Quentin just kind of stands there. He places, he like, lets go of his wife's hand and places his hand on his chest as if to, like, over dramatic gasping. Like, <gasps> why do you have this? Yep. So as I'm pulling this out of my bag, I begin to explain that while you guys ran outside, while we were uh, scavenging the dead bodies for weapons, anything that we could find of value, we found four giant chests down there. I carried what I could. This belongs to you. I recognize the seal on it. It's, it's supposed to go all across the land to places that need it. This is yours. I have returned it for you. I don't need payment for what I did. Keep it. They see him snap his fingers as a few guards come from around the corner, and I don't have any tokens, and I don't feel like moving them. Some guards come around, and they grab all uh, ten of the bars, and they move them upstairs. It's like, uh... There were supposed to be 80 bars of gold. Are you saying you only found 10? That's all that I could carry. I can't speak for anybody else as everyone was searching different parts of the place. You I, see I, him, I, I like, knew. point towards the guard captain. The guard captain walks forward to you, Aurora. And are you going to try and resist him looking in your pack? I pull out my bag and say we still have more in a slide as I take out the bars. The guard captain notions for the guys to come down. He sends one of them outside. They immediately go out, and you see through the, uh, like, portal window that they have, there's guards running across the city. You see them actually returning uh, shortly after, carrying all the chests. And uh, one of the guards comes in, and he reports to the captain. He's like, uh, Captain, there's two balls still unaccounted for. All the rest are here. And the guard captain kind of looks at you for a moment. And he steps forward and he actually opens your pack and begins looking through it, Aurora. And then he moves to you, Sydney, and starts looking through your pack as well. Uh-huh. Right then. This money is actually meant... For the Lordship so that we can maintain our supplies to give us the ability to purchase food and long substances. There's things that this specific town will need. Unfortunately, the winter months are coming. And growing things in the winter months is one of the most difficult things. Our farmers struggle, so we have to purchase from outside sources and they charge quite a hefty fine I appreciate you returning these to me I look at Sydney and say I'll go ask the other members if they carried anything Sydney notions okay before you leave the guard captain stops you and keeps you inside of the room kind of Stopping you in the sense that the Lord is speaking and you're not allowed to leave yet. Oh, rip. The two of you have come forward and actually brought this back to us as it's meant to be. Sydney turns towards the, the I, I I am not I am not a thief, I am a noble. We have to respect each other. I know of your family, Burning Song. I recognized you from when we met before. And you were much less womanly back then, but I remember when you and you were a child, before your parents sent you off to the Bard's College. You were always singing and dancing in the hall. I owe you for this. It's a debt that I... It's a debt, and that's all I can say. I'm not sure how I will repay you in the future, but I will do my best. Sydney notions. Sydney approaches the Lord, takes her hand and gently puts it on the side of his arm and says, you don't need to repay me. All we need is just somewhere to come back if we need help. We don't need money. I don't need anything. Just friends. You're obviously not good at this whole noble thing, are you? 
I'm a different type of mobile. Clearly. Regardless, a favor is a favor, and I've already promised my favor. <clears throat> a part of what I can offer you for today. There's a town, a rather large city. It's to the west of here. I'm not sure what you might be able to find there, but you might have better luck in your adventures by going there. There is uh, quite a lot going on in that area. It's a bit of a dangerous hike. It's roughly 10 miles away. But in the meantime, there's a few things around town that I'm sure that you could find to keep yourselves occupied for now. But eventually, uh, you should find your way to Crow's Eye. Just be cautious. There's word of rebels in our mists. Those that seek to unseat the King of Ravenholm. He kind of has this dubious look in his eye. He kind of, his face softens again and he kind of like places his hands on his hips and kind of adjusts his pants kind of pulling them back up a little bit mm -hmm. what, was the, what was the town called again crow's eye okay thank you i start casting ice magic and say trust me rebels will be just nice ice statues to decorate our path uh, from what I can tell, they have some rather powerful adventurers that have already sided with them, along with quite a few of the Lord's ladies, and if rumors are to be held true, and they even have a duke and the general of the army on their side. Be careful if you run across them. They are powerful. Sydney turns and looks towards the to Aurora and then back to the noble and she begins to say if there's any information, anything, your scouts any other thing that you have information for us before we leave town any help would be much appreciated well, be careful heading west if you do go to Crow's Eye there's uh, an unfortunate it appears that the king has actually sent a uh, Few discretionary forces. They operate and answer only to the king. If you answer their questions wrong or they believe you to be a traitor to the nation, they might attempt to execute you on sight. Do be careful. If need be, just say you're part of my vassal, though I'm sure the name Burning Song might carry a bit of weight, should you use that as well. Your family is in good standing in the capital. You see him, like, take out a small parchment, and he begins writing something on it. He's like, here. Take this to uh, the alchemist, and uh, there's a... There's someone on the north side of town that might offer you some services as well. A, a weaver. Uh, present this missive to them. Don't let them keep it. You're going to need it for both of them. I'm not going to write two of them. Offer it to them and they will offer you some discounts on what they have. Beyond that, I'm not sure I can be of much else. Um, Sydney grabs the parchment paper from him. Thank you very much. This, this will be a good help. If there's any other things that you might need that I may be offer, able to offer, come to me and ask. And you, uh, I'm not sure what your name is. Sydney Aurora. Aurora. Uh, yeah, talking to Aurora. You're obviously Sydney Burning Song. He recognized you. I was, I was saying like, hey, that's Aurora, by the way. Aurora. 
You don't look like you're from this land. Oh. Uh, where have you come from, if you don't mind my asking? I wonder if the text-to-speech will say this correctly. Aleph. Close enough. We'll pretend that Aurora said the Elotian Empire. You see as you speak these words, his like gaze goes from this slight suspicion to this relaxed face again. Ah. Oh. You don't see many people from the Elothian Empire on this side of the world. I... suppose there's no quarrel in it. Do be careful. We do have spies coming from Lumos and now word of rebels and... Uh, it's almost as if the entire world has gone mad. Be careful in your travels and... Again. In the future I might be able to grant you a bit of landstead here. At least grant you a house for you and your adventuring friends. Okay, holy moly. Alright. Hello? Welcome back. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, got pulled away for some bullshit. What did I miss? A lot. <laughs> so, the morning came. Um... Ray went and grabbed some breakfast, and then uh, Sydney and Aurora joined them. They had a bit to eat. You slept in a little bit longer than normal. I mean, frustration does that. Uh, Sydney and Aurora went to go visit the uh, local noble, uh, Lord Quentin. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, they just... I'll let them tell you. Sure. Uh, do you want me to do it, or do you want Aurora to do it? Either or. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm asking Harris. If you have any gold bars, you will get fucking arrested if you don't hand them in. If you took any of those gold bars, um, you should probably turn them in. Oh, I didn't take any of those. Okay. Because we, we turned in all of ours. We gave, willingly, we gave them to them initially. That was my plan from the beginning. Because once I did a history check or a, whatever it was, uh, on the crest on the chest, they realized that, that with all the gold was supposed to go to all these towns. So my intention from the beginning with it was to turn it back to the king, or to the nobles here. So that's why Drent denied the bars. Yeah. That's why he didn't touch them. Hmm more noble of him than being a green monger like myself uh, just as like a little bit of extra background knowledge for you Abigail the glistening dragon while they appreciate wealth they appreciate wealth earned it's not so much direct greed as much as I accumulated wealth through actions Yes, you accumulate wealth through actions, or you crafted things that are worthy and magnificent enough to earn wealth. It's essentially the god of, like, crafters, merchants, and people that use their tradecraft in order to gain wealth, or people that were born into wealth and maintain it well. Hmm. Well, it's nice to know that I'm not too far off course with my character. Yeah. But... Uh, Again, it's one of those things where, like, directly stealing might not fall into their uh, cookbook. Right, and I haven't directly stolen from anyone. No, I'm not saying that you have. It's just extra knowledge. Uh, the glistening dragon is predominantly worshipped in uh, Martharis, the southern continent that's by itself. Okay. Mainly because in Matharis, there's a bunch of dwarves, gnomes, uh, half goblins, trade. and a lot of crafter types. And a lot of the higher-end mechanical devices and, like, skyships tend to come from Matharis. Hmm. 
which in the future when uh, you have some free time, I would actually love to start building your backstory properly. Oh yeah, um, I'll have free time tomorrow along the list of all the other things I'll be doing, but I don't have to go to work tomorrow, so that's... Uh, I also know that's that the... you have a game tomorrow, so just hit me up when you have some free time. No, actually, uh, the game has been postponed so we can play it in person on Sunday, so... So my schedule is completely free on Sunday. Oh, well, even better. Yeah, um, I'll be, if you want, just send me messages and I'll respond timely, as timely as I can. I will be at work uh, starting from 7 p.m. EST to 11 p.m. Uh, yeah, I'll just, uh... I'll be messaging you with it, just getting some general information. Um, I'll help build your backstory into the world. I just want to know if there's any specifics or anything like that, but we can get to that a little bit later. Or, well, tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, cutting back to Abigail up here in the inn. Uh, you're... Not sharing a room with uh, Absolus. You're actually upstairs in the back room. Uh, you wake up and start doing what you want to do. You can still smell breakfast food coming from downstairs. It's mm. pancakes with butter. It's scrambled egg and bacon. Hmm. Is there anything specific that you would like to do? Um, I'll probably go grab breakfast, having slept in, and um, I w honestly, the thing I want to do is sell some of the weapons and other stuff that we got. Some of just the excess material that we won't be able to carry. Um, but I'm looking to maybe bargain for a bit more on my end as opposed to what the trader might be. Uh, willing to offer. Or vendor, I should say. Well, the main vendor that you do remember from when you were staying here, you have the blacksmith to the north, Bernard. There's a um, tailor that's across the street from him. Or, yeah. So you have Bernard here the crafter and blacksmith you have the tailor over here and uh, to the south of the tailor there's a librarian and over here there is like an alchemy and herbal shop mm. then you have the general sundries of the guy that traumatized ray beyond that most of this is just uh, farm housing and the noble's house is to the south, past the bridge. All right. Um, I think. Um, uh, nobody wants to keep any of the weapons, right? I think I'm Ray was looking at grabbing one of the uh, swords. Sword or the long sword, whatever the hell it is, plus one. Uh, from the loot from the dead, there's a uh, plus one longsword, a plus one leather okay. armor. There's seven daggers, uh, two strange icons from Forgotten Gods, two tents, eight bedrolls, eight thick blankets, eight pillows, 40 trail rations, and then there's the extra coin and stuff. Mm. Which, speaking of that, I forgot to actually uh, bring that up. While you guys were down there, there were uh, two people, the Arcanist and one of the lieutenants, that had these strange, like, uh, kind of like a religious uh, amulet, except it was like a little icon hanging from a necklace. And uh, not exactly sure what these, like, holy symbols represent. You'd have to do a check for it. If any of you wanted to attempt it. Sounds like my job. You can either go religion or history. Fuck. 
fuck? The fuck? So, uh, cutting back, Aurora, you try to, like, decipher what these symbols were. And the only thing you can think of is, why is it shaped like a skull? And you don't really get much else out of it. Can I roll for it? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, if you want to roll with advantage, I could possibly help you. Uh, it's intelligence? Is that what I'm known for, Josh? It's either history or religion. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go with history, because I have a plus four in history. So, it's up to you if you want to help or if I just go and hit it. Yeah, I mean, I'll allow it. Okay, so I look at the green dress lady and say, excuse me for what I'm about to say. Uh, hang on, let them roll for this real quick. Uh, do I just roll or how do I... Uh, you click me? on... Yeah. What's it face? Make sure you have advantage turned on. Uh, hang on. Let me... How do I turn advantage on? Oh, There's a button. And then click uh, history. History or religion, your choice. Look at that, twenty-one. Twenty-one. Hang on a sec. Oh. Just one out for stuff. Jesus. Thank you. And how about you like them? So I saw here, grab them. Appreciate it. <gasps> Alright, so Sydney, with the help of Abigail, you both like start bouncing a few ideas off of each other. Uh thinking back to some of the um old books that you've read or information that you crossed paths with and what you remember and kind of like discuss for a little while is that this is one of the Elder gods uh, from the time back when uh, the Ascended Dragon Lords first came in. This is an icon of the, well, the god of false life, Necromar, the ruler of undead. He is supposed to have disappeared when the uh, original dragons actually ascended to become dragon gods, or the original heroes ascended to become dragon gods, he disappeared and he refused to fight in the battle against the great evil or whatever, you don't really remember. But this was a... This was a very unliked god. Their power was literally to manipulate death to bring well, the dead back to life as unwilling servants. Beyond that, you guys don't really know much else. Be, Yeah. So, cutting back to Aurora down here. As you were going to say to Lady Shrew. So I get that your handmaiden has died and I'm sorry for that, but... You're yeah, sorry for that, but... Did any of you think to perhaps grab her? There's only so much we can do, miss. She gives you this snood, like, nose up in the air, like, ugh. 
just be glad that I'm not charging you for her death in order to pay for her family's woes. Just, I should take any reward that you were offered and just take it for myself. And make sure that her family is well paid. She kind of like turns her head to the side, almost like dismissively. Honey, if I was afraid of you, I'd show it, but as you can clearly tell. I do not care about your words. I had to make a note of that. Excuse me. Note made. Sir, is there anything else that you two would like to do while you're sitting here talking with the lordships? Uh, no, I, I get that. that you are nobles and wish to live like luxury, but you need to understand that these were trapdoor spiders. I almost died myself, but clearly you don't give a fuck about that. Adventurers, your entire life is meant to be expendable. Why else would you go around selling yourself? You sell your life. To help others or to make money? In the end, most of you just, that's all you care about. If you're not making money, then what's the point? Honey, I'm far from an adventurer. I would say. At least adventurers would have been able to save my handmaiden from death. Okay, all right, all right. We're all done. Thank you very much. <laughs> See as Sydney just grabs Aurora, covers her mouth, and begins dragging her out. Holy shit, Batman. Yeah. I, I thought it would be like three or something. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. You, you, um, Ab Ab Abby, you, you missed, um, Aurora, John Cena, body slam me. Hmm. Yeah. You talk a lot for someone who has a very short lifespan, Your Majesty. Oh God! <laughs> <Yes>! <laughs> what the fuck, nurse? <laughs> oh my God! Gonna fix your tokens. Oh, what the <laughs> fuck, nurse? Shut up! <laughs> I can't be seen in public. Luckily, Sydney managed to drag Aurora out of the door. Um, the guard captain shut it as she said her last piece. Look, she asked for it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so as the two of you, I'm assuming, head back to the tavern. Yeah. And go ahead and just... <laughs> Insta teleport. You find Abigail sitting there eating breakfast as the two of you come in. There's some goods and stuff. We'll handle all of the like selling, buttering, and trading. Um, 
off screen. As for now, I'm going to go ahead and close this session out as it's already getting pretty late for everyone. And yep. we're missing two people now. Gotcha. Um, oh, and we did, Ab Abby, we did find the t name of the next town we should be going to. Oh, did we now? Yeah, uh, it is called Crozai. Hmm. So, the next town. Yeah, it's to the east of uh, Brathus, down the main road. There are uh, bandits, not bandits, but I forgot how he said it. I wrote it down, but I said bandits. But there's like a whole thing along the way we got to be careful about. Um, rebels? Like, yeah, rebels, thank you. Let me change that. Um, I mean, to be honest, Abigail wasn't there during the conversation, so they wouldn't actually know. Unless somebody told me. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm telling her, Sydney. Oh. All right. I'm filling you in, giving you an, an update of what the hell's going on. Uh, but I'm going to go more into detail once everyone's here. Gotcha. So we'll pick this back up as the other two eventually join you for breakfast and you'll catch everyone up. Wardness to the turdness. Thanks for joining me for this session.